Welcome back to Ronin Recap. Now on to the next chapter. Changping County was located in the east of Three Mountain City and was close to the East Sea. Three Mountain City's only international airport was located by the sea in Changping County, so its overall economic development level was above average among the eight counties in the five districts of Three Mountain City. Huzi's family lived in Little Island Village in Linhai Town. This small fishing village was more than 20 kilometers away from Changping County. Sha Ruofei came out of the station and booked a taxi for 200 yuan and went straight to Little Island Village. Sha Ruofei also knew about Hu Zi's family situation. Hu Zi's father was a traditional fisherman. Ten years ago, he was caught in a typhoon when he went out to sea and never returned. After that, the family relied on Hu Zi's mother to repair the fishing nets and do odd jobs to support them. Hu Zi's sacrifice made things worse for this family. That was why Sha Ruofei felt so guilty. The taxi stopped at the entrance of the village. After Sha Ruofei paid the fare, he got out and walked towards Hu Zi's house at the east end of the village. He carried a black military satchel and a large plastic bag in his hand. After all, he was here to visit an elder. It was definitely not good to come empty-handed, so before Sha Ruofei left, he had packed a large bag of vegetables produced in the spiritual map space. In this small village by the sea, the air was filled with the smell of the sea. Sha Ruofei thought that he would be able to treat Hu Zi's mother's illness soon, and he was both excited and expectant. He could not help but speed up. At this moment, there was a sudden commotion not far ahead. A young girl's voice was heard. Zhang Cheng, what do you want? Get out of my way. Sha Ruofei frowned and looked up. He saw a girl carrying a bucket of water not far ahead and three young men were blocking her way. The girl was about 17 or 18 years old. She was wearing a plain white t-shirt and a pair of blue jeans that had gone a little pale from washing. However, ordinary clothes still could not hide her natural beauty. Her curvaceous figure still exuded attractive temptation even in the cheapest t-shirt. Her face was also very delicate. Under her light eyebrows were large watery eyes that seemed to be able to speak, and her pale pink cherry lips were gently pursed. Because she was carrying water, her face was flushed, and there were small beads of sweat on her forehead, giving her a pitiful appearance. The leader of the three, a young man with a tuft of green hair, said cheekily. Chower, don't be so fierce. I don't mean anything else. I just want to invite you to the county city to play. The girl called Chower said coldly. I'm not interested. Move. Zhang Cheng was not angry at all despite being turned down directly. He still smiled and said. Then let's go for a ride on the beach. I just bought a new car. Do you want to try it? Read updated stories at noval.com. I already said that I'm not interested. If you don't move aside, I'll call for help. Chower gritted her teeth and said coldly. Call for help. Lin Chow, you're too naive. Who in Little Island Village dares to interfere in Brother Chang's matters? One of Zhang Chang's lackeys sneered. Another sidekick chimed in. Lin Chao, it's your good fortune that Brother Chang has taken a fancy to you. Don't be shameless. By the way, I heard that your mother is quite seriously ill. If you follow our Brother Chang, perhaps Brother Chang will help your mother pay for treatment when he's happy. Zhang Chang nodded with a smile. Of course. Chao'er, as long as you agree to be my girlfriend, I'll pay for your mother's treatment. With that, Zhang Chang took a step forward to pull Lin Chao's hand. Lin Chao was so frightened that her face turned pale. Just as Zhang Chang's hand was about to touch Lin Chao, a large hand grabbed Zhang Chang's wrist tightly like an iron hoop. Zhang Chang immediately cried out in pain. It was Sha Ruofei. In fact, when Sha Ruofei heard that lackey call out Lin Chao's name, his expression had already turned cold. Then, he strode over. Because, Tiger's original name was Lin Hu, and he had a younger sister at home whose name was Lin Chao. Moreover, Sha Ruofei knew that in the entire Little Island Village, only Hu Zi's family did not have direct water access at home because of their financial difficulties. This girl's name was Lin Chao, and she was carrying water. It was obvious who she was. Who the hell are you? Let go. It hurts. Zhang Chang gritted his teeth and shouted. Sha Ruofei snorted coldly. As he let go, he gently pushed forward. Zhang Chang immediately fell to the ground. Zhang Chang stood up and glared fiercely at Sha Ruofei. He gritted his teeth and said, You're an outsider, how dare you be so arrogant in our little island village? 
A cold smile hung on Sha Ruofei's face. Disappear while I'm still in a good mood. Sha Ruofei had used a lot of strength just now, causing Zhang Cheng to have some reservations, but this sentence immediately angered him. Zhang Cheng thought about how this was Little Island Village, and there were three people on his side. What was there to be afraid of? After taking a sip, he shouted. FCK. He really thinks he's something else. Little Wei, Big Mao, beat him up. As soon as he finished speaking, the three of them rushed towards Sha Ruofei aggressively. Lin Chao couldn't help but cry out in surprise. She was very worried for this righteous young man. However, her scream stopped halfway. Her mouth was still wide open and she was unaware of it. Because in almost an instant, Lin Chao only felt her vision blur. She did not even see Sha Ruofei's actions clearly. Then, she saw Zhang Cheng and the other two fly four to five meters away and land heavily on the ground, wailing non-stop. Clearly all three were badly hurt. Sha Ruofei's lips curled up slightly as he thought to himself. My strength and speed are much better than before. Those petals are really good stuff. As if he had done something very unimportant, he gently dusted off his non-existent hands and walked over to Lin Chao. A caring look flashed in his eyes as he asked. Are you all right? Lin Chao came back to her senses and quickly said. I'm fine, thank you. Sha Ruofei smiled and said. If there's nothing else, let's go. I'll take you back. Without asking for Lin Chao's permission, he stuffed the plastic bag of super vegetables into Lin Chao's hands. Then, he picked up the bucket of water and strode towards Hu Zi's house. Lin Chao looked at Zhang Cheng and the other two on the ground, and a trace of worry flashed across her eyes. She gritted her teeth and quickly followed Sha Ruofei. Lin Chao saw Sha Ruofei carrying the water easily and walked straight to her house without asking her. She couldn't help but ask in curiosity. How, how did you know where my family lives? Sha Ruofei turned to Lin Chao and smiled. Not only do I know where your family lives, I know your name is Lin Chao. You're 18 years old. Chocolate is your favorite food. The idol you admire the most is Zhou Lin Sai. Sha Ruofei said a lot and Lin Chao was stunned. She stood rooted to the ground and thought for a long time. Suddenly, a possibility flashed across her mind and she immediately revealed a happy expression. Only then did she realize that Sha Ruofei had already walked away with the water. Lin Chao quickly chased after him and said as she jogged, Your brother Ruofei, aren't you? Sha Ruofei laughed and said, This little girl is quite smart. You've guessed it so quickly. Sha Ruofei knew so much about Lin Chao, so it was naturally through Lin Hu. When they were in the army, Sha Ruofei and Lin Hu were the best brothers, and Lin Hu doted on his sister. The two of them often talked about his sister when they chatted. Lin Chao usually attended high school in the county city. The last time Sha Ruofei came to Little Island Village, the two of them did not manage to meet. As for Lin Chao, she had naturally never seen Sha Ruofei before. However, when Hu Zi sent photos home in the past, there were photos of Sha Ruofei and him. Although a few years had passed and Sha Ruofei had long lost his youthful appearance as a recruit, Lin Chao still felt that he looked a little familiar. In addition, Sha Ruofei had said so much about her just now. Moreover, she heard from her mother that Sha Ruofei had come to Little Island Village not long ago, so Lin Chao quickly guessed Sha Ruofei's identity. After confirming Sha Ruofei's identity, Lin Chao was naturally very excited. However, she quickly realized something and quickly said, Brother Ruofei, leave Little Island Village quickly. This Zhang Chang is a tyrant in the village. His father is also the village director. If you beat him up, they will definitely not let you off. Sha Ruofei smiled indifferently and said, Let's not talk about this first. Lin Chao, aren't you studying in the county city? It's not the weekend today. Why are you at home? Also, I heard from those hooligans that your mother's illness is very serious. Didn't I already transfer 500,000 yuan to auntie's account? Why didn't you go for treatment? Although uremia was very dangerous, if one persisted in doing treatment, it should not worsen immediately. Of course, if she wanted to cure it completely, she still had to change the kidney. Otherwise, it would only be a temporary solution. Lin Chao's eyes widened in surprise. Brother Ruofei, so you were the one who transferred the 500,000 yuan. I knew it. When Sha Ruofei transferred the money, he was worried that Hu Zi's mother would reject such a huge sum of money, so he transferred it anonymously. 
Therefore, Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao did not know who transferred the money. Seeing Lin Chao's expression, Sha Ruofei could not help but have a bad feeling. He could not help but ask, Why? Auntie didn't use the money, is it? Lin Chao smiled bitterly and said, My mother is a person like that, the money came from an unknown source. She said someone else might have made a wrong transaction, so she insisted on not using it. She, she hasn't been on dialysis for a month. At this point, Lin Chao's eyes couldn't help but turn red. This, isn't this a huge mistake? How can she survive so long without dialysis? Sha Ruofei couldn't help but cry out. Then he asked nervously, how is auntie now? It's not very good, two tears fell from Lin Chao's eyes as she sobbed. She has been bedridden for a week, brother Ruofei, if this continues, I'm afraid my mother won't be able to hold on for long. Sha Ruofei quickly comforted her. It's fine, it's fine. Lin Chao, with me around, auntie will be fine. Hearing Sha Ruofei's words, the helpless Lin Chao seemed to feel a sense of support all of a sudden. Her uneasy emotions slowly eased. At this moment, Lin Chao recalled the matter about Zhang Chang and hurriedly said. Brother Ruofei, Zhang Chang will definitely seek revenge on you. You, you should leave first. We'll talk about mom's illness a few days later. Sha Ruofei said nonchalantly. Don't worry, girl. If that Zhang Chang dares to come over again, I don't mind letting him taste my fist again. Lin Chao had seen Sha Ruofei's heroic act with her own eyes and was relieved to hear that. However, she was still worried. After all, this was a lawful society. Many things did not work just because one was strong. Not only was Zhang Cheng the son of the village director, but he also had an uncle who was an official in the town's police station. In Lin Chao's opinion, this was considered a strong background. How could ordinary people afford to offend him? She glanced at Sha Ruofei worriedly. Seeing that he still looked indifferent, she did not dare to persuade him further. She obediently followed Sha Ruofei and walked towards her house. Soon they reached the house at the east end of the village. This was Hu Zi's house. Such houses were basically extinct in the economically developed coastal areas. They were also the only one in Little Island Village. The mottled walls, dilapidated roof, and dilapidated courtyard all revealed how poor this family was. With one hand on the shoulder pole, Sha Ruofei pushed open the courtyard door that was about to fall off and walked straight into the overgrown courtyard. He went to the door of the simple kitchen on the right side of the house and poured both buckets of water into the vat under the eaves before walking into the house with Lin Chao. The house was filled with junk, and the light was dim. However, Sha Ruofei's vision seemed to have improved a lot after absorbing the tricolored petals. He did not feel uncomfortable coming in from outside. There was a worn-out wooden bed on the inside of the house. Hu Zi's mother was half lying on it, two pillows beneath her. Sha Ruofei immediately saw that Hu Zi's mother's face was very pale and her edema was very serious. She was on the verge of death. Hearing footsteps, Hu Zi's mother thought her daughter had returned. She gave a low moan and said weakly. Chower, you're back. Sha Ruofei hurriedly walked forward and squatted down in front of the bed. Auntie, it's me. Hu Zi's mother struggled to open her eyes. After seeing Sha Ruofei, she forced a smile and said, It's, Ruofei, quick, take a seat. Seeing Hu Zi's mother like this, Sha Ruofei almost cried as he asked, Auntie, I sent you some money. Why didn't you go for dialysis? Hu Zi's mother struggled to sit up when she heard this. As she panted, she said, Updated chapters on Noblebent.com. So, so you were the one who transferred the money, child. Where, where did you get so much money? Auntie, don't worry about where I got the money from. You're already so sick. Why didn't you take the money to see the doctor first? Sha Ruofei said with heartache. At the same time, he felt even more guilty. If he had known this would happen, he would have come back after transferring the money. No matter how much Hu Zi's mother refused, even if he had to carry her to the hospital by force, it would not have delayed her illness to such a serious extent. Child. You just retired from the army, where did you get so much money? Don't tell me you, Hu Zi's mother was clearly worried that Sha Ruofei did not take the right path and asked anxiously. Auntie, I sold the house a few days ago. Including my discharge fee, I only managed to raise 500,000 yuan. There's definitely no problem with the source of it. Sha Ruofei hurriedly explained. Ah, sell the house. 
Hu Zi's mother said anxiously. How can you do that? Ruo Fei, why are you so impulsive? Seeing that Hu Zi's mother was struggling to speak, Sha Ruo Fei hurriedly said. Auntie, let's not talk about this first. I heard about a prescription a few days ago. It's said to be very effective for uremia, so I made some medicine and brought it over. Take the medicine first. With that, Sha Ruo Fei quickly opened the military satchel and took out the bottle of petal. Solution. Lin Chao came over with a glass of water for Sha Ruo Fei. When she saw Sha Ruo Fei take out a mineral water bottle, she couldn't help but ask curiously. Brother Ruo Fei, is this Chinese medicine? Sha Ruo Fei smiled and said. Something like that. Chao er, go get a cup. Hurry. Lin Chao hurriedly found a small glass and came out. It was the kind of glass meant for drinking beer. She cleaned the cup and heated it with boiling water before handing it to Sha Ruo Fei. Sha Ruo Fei unscrewed the cap of the mineral water bottle and poured out a cup of diluted petal solution. He said to Hu Zi's mother. Auntie, quickly drink the medicine. Hu Zi's mother actually did not have any hope in her heart. She knew very well that if she did not have a kidney transplant, her illness would worsen day by day. It was impossible for there to be any remedies to treat it. However, Sha Ruo Fei had come all the way to deliver the medicine, so she could not brush off his good intentions. Hence, she nodded with difficulty and said weakly, Thank you, Ruo Fei, you're so thoughtful. Auntie, Hu Zi and I have a life and death relationship. Stop being polite and quickly drink your medicine. Sha Ruo Fei said. Then he went forward and supported Hu Zi's mother's back with one hand. With the other hand, he held a cup and carefully fed a cup of petal solution to Hu Zi's mother. After feeding Hu Zi's mother three cups of petal solution in a row, Sha Ruo Fei felt slightly more at ease. He couldn't take his eyes off Hu Zi's mother. At the side, Lin Chao said in amusement, Brother Ruo Fei, my mother just finished drinking the medicine. Even if it's the right medicine, it can't be effective so quickly. Sha Ruo Fei smiled and did not refute Lin Chao's words. Hu Zi's mother, however, looked puzzled. She said, Chao er, this, this medicine seems to be really effective. I feel much better than before. Ah, oh, no way. It really worked so quickly. Lin Chao's eyes widened in shock. While Lin Chao was making a fuss, Sha Ruo Fei had already carefully observed Hu Zi's mother's condition. After drinking the petal solution, he realized that her face had clearly begun to turn red, and her edema was slowly fading. Seeing this, Sha Ruo Fei was finally relieved. Ruo Fei, Chao er, I think my stomach feels warm. I feel much stronger and less uncomfortable. Hu Zi's mother said. She was obviously talking with a lot more energy. Lin Chao also realized that her mother's face was starting to turn red and she was clearly more energetic. She was only surprised at first, but then her face turned pale and her eyes turned red. She tugged at Sha Ruo Fei's sleeve and gestured for him to go out and talk. Seeing that Sha Ruo Fei did not react, she simply pulled Sha Ruo Fei's hand and walked out. Sha Ruo Fei originally wanted to observe Hu Zi's mother's condition again, but he did not expect Lin Chao to pull him out. He could only follow her out of the house in confusion. As soon as he went out, Sha Ruo Fei saw that Lin Chao's eyes were red and tears were about to flow. He hurriedly asked, Chao er, what's wrong? Brother Ruo Fei, my, my mother's situation doesn't seem right. Lin Chao choked. She, she can't be. What is it? Sha Ruo Fei said in confusion. I think she's doing great. The medicine is obviously taking effect. Lin Chao said anxiously. It's not that. I, I've heard people say that, patients suddenly become spirited before, before they die. Then, Sha Ruo Fei could not help but laugh. You mean the last radiance of the setting sun? Lin Chao's face turned even paler and she said with a crying voice. Even you think so. Sha Ruo Fei couldn't help but pat Lin Chao's head gently and say. Girl, what are you thinking about all day long? You are even talking. About the last radiance, Auntie is clearly fine, don't curse her. It's really not. Lin Chao's eyes revealed a trace of hope. If I say it's not, then it isn't. Don't you trust brother Ruo Fei? Sha Ruo Fei said. Please have some confidence in the medicine I brought, okay. Then from inside the house came the voice of Hu Zi's mother. Chao er, what are you talking about with brother Ruo Fei? Come in and get me a glass of water. When Lin Chao heard her mother's voice that was full of energy and since Sha Ruo Fei had already guaranteed it, she smiled through her tears. 
She stuck out her tongue playfully at Sha Ruofei and replied loudly. Coming. With that, she skipped happily into the house to get water for her mother. Sha Ruofei looked at Lin Chao's youthful back and could not help but laugh. When he returned to the house, he saw Hu Zi's mother sitting by the bed, gulping down water. When she saw Sha Ruofei enter, she handed the cup to Lin Chao and asked, Ruofei, what medicine did you bring? The effect is too good. Sha Ruofei smiled and said, Auntie, it's a good thing that it's effective. I'll send you more after you finish this bottle of medicine. You have to drink three glasses every day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening. It won't be long before you completely recover. In the past, Huzi's mother would never have dared to think about treating her illness without a kidney transplant. However, after drinking the medicine that Sha Ruofei had brought, she inexplicably felt confident. Because the effect of this medicine was really too good, Huzi's mother smiled and nodded. At this moment, Lin Chao finally believed that her mother's condition had improved greatly because she had taken the medicine brought by Sha Ruofei. She looked at Sha Ruofei gratefully. Then, Lin Chao thought of Zhang Chang and her expression changed slightly. Brother Ruofei, there's nothing else here. You should leave quickly. Hu Zi's mother could not help chiding her. Chao er, why are you so rude? Brother Ruofei came all the way here to deliver medicine to me. He didn't even drink any hot water, yet why are you chasing him away? Lin Chao was so anxious that her face turned red. Mom, you've misunderstood. It's not that I want to chase Brother Ruofei away. It's, Aiya, I'm dying of anxiety. Brother Ruofei, if you don't leave now, it'll be too late. Hu Zi's mother was even more confused. She was about to ask when an arrogant voice came from outside the door. Leave. Where to? No one in Little Island Village can leave after hitting me. It's Zhang Chang. Hu Zi's mother's expression changed drastically. She asked, Ruofei, did you have a conflict with Zhang Chang? They were pestering Chao'er at the entrance of the village. I casually taught him a lesson, Sha Ruofei said nonchalantly with a faint smile on his lips. It was obvious that he did not take Zhang Chang seriously. Hu Zi's mother immediately struggled out of bed and said, Ruofei, I, I'll go talk to him. After all, I'm his elder. Sha Ruofei hurriedly stopped Hu Zi's mother and said, Auntie, you're still very weak. You mustn't get out of bed. With that, Sha Ruofei looked at Lin Chao and said, Chao er, take good care of auntie. Lin Chao nodded, then looked at the door worriedly and said, But, at this moment, Zhang Chang was still clamoring outside the door. Kid, weren't you very arrogant just now? Why are you hiding like a tortoise now? If you don't get out, I'll kick the door open. Ha ha, don't tell me you're having a threesome with the mother and daughter. Then this kid is in trouble. After being frightened by brother Chang, he'll probably have become impotent in the future. Ha 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 ha, the hooligans brought by Zhang. Chang also joined in the teasing. A cold glint flashed across Sha Ruofei's eyes, but he quickly restrained it. When he looked at Lin Chao, his gaze became gentle again. It's fine, they're just a few small fry. I'll go out and send them away. With that, he walked out the door. Lin Chao also wanted to follow, but she was stopped by Sha Ruofei's gaze. She looked at Sha Ruofei's back as he walked out unhurriedly. At this moment, that back seemed to have become very tall and lofty. The fear and uneasiness in her heart disappeared in an instant. Sha Ruofei pushed open the door and walked out of the house with a dark expression. A dozen roguish young men stood in the ruined courtyard, each of them armed with steel pipes, machetes, and other weapons. They had kicked down the dilapidated courtyard door and it lay in pieces on the ground. The leader was Zhang Chang, who had harassed Lin Chao at the village entrance. Zhang Chang's face was swollen, and one of his eyes was bruised, making him look even more ferocious. Seeing Sha Ruofei come out, Zhang Chang's eyes revealed ruthlessness as he sneered. Kid, you have guts. You actually dared to stay in Little Island Village after hitting me. If I don't teach you a lesson today, I'll really be letting you down. Previously, at the village entrance, Zhang Chang and the other two were knocked down by Sha Ruofei without any resistance. Therefore, he knew that Sha Ruofei was quite skilled. This time, he came to take revenge and called for more than ten hooligans. Moreover, everyone was armed. In Zhang Chang's opinion, no matter how powerful Sha Ruofei was, he would not be able to defeat so many of them. 
Sha Ruofei looked at these hooligans who were rubbing their fists before staring into Zhang Chang's eyes and asking calmly. Why did you bring so many men here? Zhang Chang was slightly stunned, then laughed and said. What do you want? Big guns, tell him what we want. Beside Zhang Chang, a young man in ripped jeans and dyed blonde hair immediately teased. Kid, of course we're here to mess with you. Don't tell me we want to have tea and chat with you. The ruffians also roared with laughter and said. Ha ha, is there something wrong with his FC King brain? I think he's been scared silly by Brother Chang. X explore up to date stories at novel.com. With a smug smile on his face, Big Guns said. Kid, kneel down and apologize to Brother Chang now. We can be gentler when we hit you. Otherwise, he he. Sha Ruofei looked coldly at this group of arrogant and domineering hooligans. He pursed his lips slightly and looked at Zhang Chang. So there's nothing to talk about between us. Sha Ruofei's calmness and disregard angered Zhang Chang. He snorted and said, Talk my ass. You're the first person who dared to hit me in Little Island Village. If I don't cripple you today, I'll take your surname. Also, this Lin family can't escape responsibility. I'll tear down this lousy house in a while. A sharp light flashed in Sha Ruofei's eyes. The Lin family is the family of a valiant soldier. How dare you touch their house? Zhang Chang laughed arrogantly and said, Soldier's family, so what? I used to dislike Lin Hu. If he hadn't died in the army, I would have beaten him up too. The fire in Sha Ruofei's heart began to burn fiercely, and his eyes became extremely sharp. His entire body suddenly emitted a cold aura, this was the killing intent of a soldier who had truly seen blood on the battlefield. No matter how arrogant and despotic Zhang Chang was previously, no matter how much he mocked and ridiculed him, Sha Ruofei did not really get angry. After all, in his eyes, such a hooligan was completely unpresentable. However, Zhang Chang's disdain when he spoke of the soldiers' families, especially the insult to Hu Zi, was something Sha Ruofei could not tolerate no matter what. The bloodlust buried deep in his heart was starting to stir. Zhang Chang, who was closest to Sha Ruofei, inexplicably felt a chill run down his spine and involuntarily took a step back. Even he could not understand why he felt a chill in his heart, as if the young man in front of him had suddenly become a god of death. Sha Ruofei slowly clenched his fists, and his eyes turned bloodshot. Actually, this state was very dangerous. Sha Ruofei and Huzi were both from the most elite special forces. They had received the most rigorous special forces training and had experienced many real battles. It could be said that they were the sharpest human-shaped killing weapons. Even bare-handed, they were extremely dangerous. There were many vulnerable and fatal parts of the human body. Sha Ruofei undoubtedly knew these parts like the back of his hand. Once he lost control of his emotions, it was no exaggeration to say that the lives of these dozen or so hooligans were definitely in danger. At this moment, Sha Ruofei was on the verge of losing control of his emotions. At that moment, a crisp voice sounded. Brother Ruofei. It turned out that Lin Chao was worried and walked out to take a look. When Sha Ruofei heard Lin Chao's voice, the boiling killing intent in his heart immediately subsided. Zhang Chang and the others also felt relieved. Chao er, why did you come out? Sha Ruofei frowned slightly and said, you have nothing to do here. Go in first. I don't want to. When Lin Chao saw that Zhang Chang had brought so many people over, how could she still be willing to go in? She grabbed Sha Ruofei's arm and said to Zhang Chang, Zhang Chang, today's matter has nothing to do with brother Ruofei. If you have anything, come at me. Zhang Chang had just taken a step back from Sha Ruofei, so he naturally felt embarrassed in front of his lackeys. Now that he saw Lin Chao and Sha Ruofei being so intimate, he was even more jealous and hateful. He gritted his teeth and said, Brothers, attack together and teach this kid a lesson. The thugs murmured in agreement. They raised their steel pipes and machetes and looked at Sha Ruofei maliciously as they surrounded him. Lin Chao was so frightened that her face turned pale. Sha Ruofei shielded her behind him and said calmly, Chao er, close your eyes. Huh, Lin Chao was stunned. Be good, Sha Ruofei said calmly. Then, Lin Chao felt her soft body being grabbed by Sha Ruofei and could not help but blush. Sha Ruofei calmly raised Lin Chao's hand to cover her eyes and said, Stand here and don't move. Before Lin Chao could react, she felt a gust of wind pass by. Then, she heard a scream like a pig being slaughtered. 
She could not help but secretly open her fingers and look out. She saw Sha Ruofei alone like a tiger in a pack of wolves. More than a dozen hooligans with knives, steel pipes, and car chains surrounded him, but they could not even touch the corner of his clothes. On the other hand, every time Sha Ruofei attacked, one or even several hooligans would be defeated. As long as the hooligans were hit by Sha Ruofei, those who could stand up after falling to the ground would once again grimace and scream on the ground. In the blink of an eye, more than a dozen hooligans were lying on the ground. Everyone was groaning in pain and could not get up at all. Only Zhang Chang was left standing. Extreme fear was found in his eyes. He was trembling, and he was holding up a machete. He was frozen like a clay statue and looked ridiculous. Sha Ruofei's hair was not even messed up. He easily dusted off the non-existent dust on his hands, then walked towards Zhang Chang with a faint sneer on his face. What? What do you want? Zhang Chang was so frightened that he couldn't even hold his machete properly. It fell to the ground with a clang. He backed away, putting on a brave face and shouting. Don't come near me. My uncle is the deputy director of the police station. If you dare touch me, you're dead. Sha Ruofei did not even blink as he walked towards Zhang Cheng unhurriedly. Although Sha Ruofei did not take any actions and only walked towards Zhang Cheng step by step, Zhang Cheng felt a great pressure. He still felt like he was dreaming. He couldn't even believe his eyes. Why were the dozen or so people he had brought all taken down in less than a minute? They were all armed. Whereas this fellow was unarmed. He's practically a monster. Zhang Cheng finally couldn't take the pressure anymore. He shouted and turned around to run out of the door. As for those dozen or so lackeys, he had no time to care about them. Sha Ruofei snorted coldly and took a few steps forward with a flying kick. Zhang Cheng immediately flew up and fell to the ground. His teeth hit the door frame and two of his front teeth were knocked out. He cried out in pain. Sha Ruofei walked forward and easily picked Zhang Cheng up with one hand. There was no emotion in his eyes as he said indifferently. What did you just say? The soldiers' families are nothing. And you wanted to beat up Uzi. Big brother, I was wrong, I was blind, please spare me. Zhang Cheng was in pain and afraid. He could not help but cry. Tears mixed with the blood in his mouth, and he looked extremely sorry. Sha Ruofei looked at the sobbing Zhang Cheng in disgust. A cold glint flashed across his eyes and he slapped him as fast as lightning for more than ten times. Then, he let go and Zhang Cheng immediately sat on the ground. Sha Ruofei's attack was extremely strong. Almost all of Zhang Cheng's teeth had been knocked out, and both his cheeks were swelling up at a visible speed. His entire face looked like a pig's head, and it was very miserable. Take your men and disappear, Sha Ruofei said calmly. If this happens again, it won't be just this. Yi yi yi, we'll get out of here right away, Zhang Cheng spoke through his missing teeth. He and the dozen or so hooligans supported each other and disappeared from Sha Ruofei and Lin Chao's sight. Brother Ruofei, you're amazing. Lin Chao's eyes lit up as she looked up at Sha Ruofei. There was clear admiration in her eyes. Sha Ruofei smiled faintly and said, They are just a few hooligans. Your brother and I even arrested vicious international drug dealers back then. When Sha Ruofei said this, his voice suddenly paused. He and Lin Chao both looked sad. They naturally thought of Hu Zi who had lost his life again. Sadness flashed across Lin Chao's eyes. She bit her lower lip gently and forced a smile. Brother Ruofei, let's go in. My mother must still be worried. The two of them returned to the house. As expected, Hu Zi's mother was sitting by the bed anxiously. When she saw the two of them enter, she quickly asked. How is it? I thought I heard a fight outside. Are you hurt, Ruofei? Before Sha Ruofei could speak, Lin Chao smiled and said. Mom, brother Ruofei is amazing. You didn't see it just now. Brother Ruofei fought more than ten of them alone and defeated everyone in two or three moves. Zhang Chang was beaten up by brother Ruofei. Lin Chao had been harassed by Zhang Chang a lot these days. Today, when she saw Sha Ruofei beating up Zhang Chang, she felt an indescribable sense of satisfaction. Hu Zi's mother's face fell. She said, Ruofei, did you hit Zhang Chang again? Sha Ruofei nodded and said, Auntie, I didn't want to attack him. It's just that these people were too nasty. With their words, it's really too detestable. Besides, they were the ones who attacked first. What should we do, 
Hu Zi's mother looked anxious and said, Ruofei, leave quickly. Leave Little Island Village. Zhang Cheng's family is very powerful. Us commoners can't afford to offend him. At this moment, Lin Chao also realized the seriousness of the problem and quickly said, Yes, yes, yes. Brother Ruofei, leave quickly. As long as you leave Little Island Village in Chengping County, no matter how powerful Zhang Cheng is, he can't do anything to you. She pushed Sha Ruofei towards the door as she spoke. Sha Ruofei smiled wryly, then frowned slightly. The beating just now was satisfying, but the aftereffects did not seem to be insignificant. Of course he couldn't just walk away. After he left, only Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao were left. If Zhang Cheng came to take revenge, the two of them would not be able to resist at all. X Explore up-to-date stories at novel.com. Hu Zi was no longer around, and he had sacrificed himself to save him. How could he abandon the two of them and leave? Sha Ruofei thought for a moment and said, Auntie, Lin Chao, why don't the two of you come with me? Let's go to Three Mountain City and stay there for a few days. We'll talk about the rest later. Hu Zi's mother said, Ruofei, stop caring about us. Auntie has lived in this village for decades. Everyone is our neighbors. As long as you're not here, the Zhang family can't do anything to me. Lin Chao's expression changed slightly. Her mouth opened, but she did not say anything. How could Sha Ruofei not know that Hu Zi's mother was comforting him? With Zhang Cheng's personality, if he left, the two of them would definitely be in trouble. Therefore, Sha Ruofei said, Auntie, if you don't leave with me, I won't leave either. I'll stay here and wait. Let's see what that Zhang Cheng can do. You, Hu Zi's mother did not expect Sha Ruofei to be so stubborn. Why is this child so disobedient? Sha Ruofei looked carefree as he found a chair and sat down. Auntie, if you want me to leave, let's leave together. If you want to stay, I'll stay together. Do as you see fit. Hu Zi's mother looked anxious. She knew that it would be too late if she delayed any longer. Over the years, Zhang Cheng had been running rampant in the countryside. She knew his methods very well. No matter how good Sha Ruofei was, he would still suffer if he encountered the family of officials. In the end, Hu Zi's mother gave in reluctantly. All right, then let's go together, Ruofei, hurry up, or it'll be too late. Sha Ruofei grinned and said, That's right, Auntie, you need to go to Three Mountain City for further treatment anyway. Let's go. Lin Chao also looked relieved. Clearly, she had her reservations about staying. There's no need to pack anything. Just buy new ones in Three Mountain City. Sha Ruofei said, Chao, help Auntie over. I'll carry her. Soon, Sha Ruofei carried Hu Zi's mother out the door while Lin Chao followed closely behind them. As for the courtyard door, it had long been broken by Zhang Chang and the others. In addition, there was nothing valuable at home, so they did not bother about it. To return to the city, they had to go to the county road at the entrance of the village to get a taxi, so Sha Ruofei carried Hu Zi's mother and led Lin Chao straight to the road outside the village. However, after the three of them arrived at the village entrance, they waited for more than 10 minutes but did not see a passing bus. At this moment, Sha Ruofei heard the sound of sirens approaching. Soon, he saw a police car arriving at the village entrance. Seeing three or four people in police uniform getting out of the car and running straight. Towards him, Sha Ruofei could not help but frown. They were led by a police officer with a three-star ranking. The other three were probationary officers with two arrowheads and no police number on their chests. Their armbands said, Assistant Police. They were obviously not official police officers. Sha Ruofei knew the military rank like the back of his hand, but he didn't know much about the police rank. However, he at least knew that the official police officer with a three-star ranking was the leader of this group. Hence, Sha Ruofei frowned slightly and said to the police officer, What can I do for you? fellow police officer. The policeman's face was red and his mouth reeked of alcohol. He glanced sideways at Sha Ruofei and said, We've just received a police report that you're suspected of assault. Now we're officially arresting you. Come with us to the police station. From the corner of his eye, Sha Ruofei saw a familiar figure in the backseat of the police car. That person was staring at him with hatred. How could he not understand what was going on? Find new stories on Nov.L.Bint.com. Before Sha Ruofei could speak, Huzi's mother hurriedly said, 
Inspector Li, Ruofei is young and ignorant. Can you make an exception? This police officer was also from Little Island Village. He was Zhang Cheng's uncle, Li Zhengyi, and was now the deputy director of the Linhai Town Police Station in Changping County. This Li Zhengyi had wasted his righteous name. He was not a righteous person at all. All these years, he and Zhang Cheng's father, who was the director of the Little Island Village, had colluded with each other and ran rampant in the countryside. They had done many stupid things. Therefore, Hu Zi's mother naturally recognized him at a glance. The appearance of the infamous Li Zhengyi worried Hu Zi's mother. Li Zhengyi snorted and said, Exception, do you think the laws of this country are child's play? That if you break the law you'll be fine. Over the years, Li Zhengyi had done countless illegal things with the Zhang family, but this did not stop him from being arrogant. Lin Chao mustered her courage and said, It was clearly Zhang Cheng who brought people to attack Brother Ruofei just now. Brother Ruofei was just defending himself. Li Zhengyi's eyes widened. He said sharply, Watch your mouth, young lady. Are you questioning me? Are you a cop or am I one? Do we need you to teach us how to work a case? Lin Chao bit her lower lip lightly and wanted to defend Sha Ruofei. Sha Ruofei waved her off and said to Li Zhengyi, I can follow you to the station, police comrade. But what happened today has nothing to do with either of them. Can you let them leave? Sha Ruofei was not worried that he would be at a disadvantage when he arrived at the police station. The local government would have a record of those who had retired from the special forces. Even if law enforcement authorities wanted to take coercive measures against them, there would be special agencies to investigate and coordinate carefully. In a situation like that days, even if Li Zhengyi wanted to arrest Sha Ruofei, he would immediately be suspended in the internal system. Furthermore, someone would immediately come to the Linhai Town Police Station to handle and investigate. The reason was very simple. People like Sha Ruofei were all the most dangerous human-shaped weapons. Once they suffered unfair treatment, they would cause great harm to society. Therefore, the government and the army were very cautious in this aspect. Of course, if it was really a retired special forces personnel who had broken the law, they would still be dealt with according to the law. However, the level of security and supervision would be raised to a very high level. Sha Ruofei's only worries were Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao. He could long tell that Director Li and Zhang Chang were in cahoots, and Zhang Chang had been coveting Lin Chao for a long time. Once Lin Chao was also in the police station, how could Zhang Chang not take the opportunity to touch her? Moreover, Hu Zi's mother had yet to recover, so she could not withstand such torture and shock. It's not up to you to decide whether it's related to them or not. Li Zhengyi snorted. The fight happened in the Lin family. The two of them are involved in this matter. The three of you have to go to the police station with me. Sha Ruofei narrowed his eyes and looked at Li Zhengyi. Inspector Li, are you sure you want to do this? The moment Sha Ruofei stared at him, Li Zhengyi inexplicably felt his heart palpitate. It was as if he had been targeted by a ferocious cheetah. He could not help but lower his eyes and avoid Sha Ruofei's gaze. Then he immediately raised his head again, as if he was embarrassed by his momentary cowardice, or perhaps he was emboldening himself. He said fiercely, That's right, all three of you have to go to the police station. What? You want to fight the law with violence? Sha Ruofei suppressed his anger and said, Auntie and Lin Chao are the families of the martyrs, and I was the one who beat them up. Why are you making things difficult for the two of them? Li Zhengyi sneered, The family of a martyr. How much is the family of a martyr worth? There's no one in Linhai town that I can't arrest. If you continue to nag, you'll be resisting the law using violence. When the time comes, you will be sentenced to another crime. Sha Ruofei clenched his fists so hard that they produced a cracking sound. His eyes spewed anger as he glared at the smug Li Zhengyi. Li Zhengyi stepped back, startled, his hand on the handle of his gun. He said, What do you want? Before he came, he had heard from Zhang Cheng about Sha Ruofei's terrifying skills, so he looked like he was facing a great enemy. Hu Zi's mother hurriedly tugged at Sha Ruofei's clothes and said, Ruofei, calm down. Sha Ruofei took a deep breath and said, Auntie, I'll be fine. Sha Ruofei forced himself to calm down, then looked at Li Zhengyi without any emotion. Okay, we'll follow you to the police station. I hope you won't regret your decision later. Li Zhengyi sneered, cut the crap. Get in the car. After saying that, 
he gave a look to an auxiliary police officer beside him. The auxiliary police officer immediately walked up with handcuffs. Sha Ruofei did not resist. He only smiled coldly and let the auxiliary police officer cuff him. As for Lin Chao and Hu Zi's mother, they were not handcuffed. In Li Zhengyi's eyes, only Sha Ruofei was the biggest threat. The weak appearance of the mother and daughter would not worry him at all. The group arrived at the police car. Sha Ruofei and the other two were escorted into the iron cage used to imprison suspects in the back of the police car. The two auxiliary police officers followed them into the iron cage and stared at Sha Ruofei warily. Zhang Cheng, who was sitting in the back seat of the police car, saw that Sha Ruofei had been handcuffed and felt relieved. He turned around and revealed a ferocious smile at Sha Ruofei through the iron cage. You'll be dealt with properly later, fellow. Sha Ruofei ignored Zhang Chang's threat and did not even look at him. Zhang Chang immediately felt like he had punched cotton. He sized up the terrified Lin Chao greedily before reluctantly turning his head away. The police car turned around at the village entrance and sped toward Lin Hai town. In the police car, Sha Ruofei's handcuffed hands reached awkwardly into his pockets. The two auxiliary police officers were on guard. One of them asked sternly, What are you doing? Sha Ruofei revealed a mocking smile and took out his phone. Can't I make a phone call? You can't. The auxiliary police officer shouted and stood up to snatch Sha Ruofei's phone. The space in the iron cage was very small, and Sha Ruofei was handcuffed. The auxiliary police officer thought that he would be able to capture him easily. However, he did not expect Sha Ruofei to suddenly stand up and hit him with his knee without hesitation. He immediately felt his stomach suffer a heavy blow and almost vomited on the spot. Immediately after, the auxiliary police officer's vision blurred. Sha Ruofei had already flashed behind him and strangled him with both hands. The chain between the handcuffs was instantly stuck in his throat. The auxiliary police officer grabbed the handcuffs with both hands and used all his strength, but he could not move them at all. He only felt that it was getting harder and harder to breathe. At this moment, the other auxiliary police officer also came back to his senses. However, Sha Ruofei had already occupied a favorable position in the corner of the iron cage and was holding his companion hostage. He did not dare to act rashly for a moment. Li Zhengyi, who was sitting in the back of the police car, also noticed the situation behind him immediately. He quickly took out his gun and aimed it at Sha Ruofei through the barbed wire. Stop now, or I'll shoot. Sha Ruofei had long treated the auxiliary police officer as his human shield and used the narrow terrain to hide himself well. He was not afraid of Li Zhengyi's threat at all. Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao were already stunned by the scene just now. Only then did they return to their senses. Hu Zi's mother quickly said, Ruofei, don't be rash. Sha Ruofei smiled faintly and said, Don't worry, auntie, I know what I'm doing. Then he said to Li Zhengyi with a teasing smile. Take it easy. I just want to make a phone call, that's all. But if you don't put the gun down soon, this buddy of yours is really going to suffocate. At this moment, the auxiliary police officer's face was already purple from lack of oxygen. Li Zhengyi was starting to panic too. He put the gun away and said, Let go of him. Do you know you're assaulting a police officer? Seeing that he had put away the gun, Sha Ruofei relaxed his grip a little. The auxiliary policeman hurriedly took deep breaths, feeling as if he had just escaped death. Zhang Cheng was not afraid when he saw this scene. Instead, he felt a burst of ecstasy, fighting was not a big deal. Even if he found some connections to get a serious injury assessment, Sha Ruofei would only be sentenced to a few years at most. Now, this kid was courting death by holding a police officer hostage in a police car. This was a huge crime. Sha Ruofei was naturally not interested in Zhang Chang's thoughts at all, and he did not take Li Zhengyi's threat to heart at all. He sighed in his heart and dialed the familiar number on his phone, then put his ear to the phone. He was handcuffed, and the handcuffs were wrapped around the neck of the auxiliary police officer in front of him. It was naturally very awkward to make a call like this. However, this was not a problem for Special Forces elite Sha Ruofei. The call was answered on the third ring. A steady voice said with suppressed excitement. You're finally willing to call me, you brat. I thought you'd FC King vanished off the face of the earth. Sha Ruofei chuckled in embarrassment and said. Chief, aren't I calling you now? 
You won't be looking for me if you don't have something on right. The person on the other end of the line snorted and said, Tell me. Did you get into trouble? The Wolf King knows me best. Sha Ruofe giggled. Boss, I'm handcuffed and being sent to the police station. Hurry up and save me. The voice on the other end of the line was suddenly grave. What's going on? Tell me. The person Sha Ruofe called was his leader when he was serving in the army, the captain of the Wild Wolves commando team, Guo Zan, codenamed Wolf King. Sha Ruofe, who had a terminal illness after retiring, was basically waiting for death. After returning to his hometown, he had never contacted Guo Zan again. If he had not been forced into a corner by Li Zhengyi, Sha Ruofei would not have troubled the leader of his previous troop. However, that day's matter involved Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao. Sha Ruofei had to protect them no matter what. He did not know anyone in the area, so he could only look for Guo Zan. Yes, Wolf King, Sha Ruofei replied. Discover new chapters at Novelbent.com. Then he told Guo Zan everything that had happened that day. On the other end of the phone, Guo Zan's expression became uglier and uglier. His eyes were about to spit fire. After Sha Ruofei finished reporting, Guo Zan asked indifferently, Blood Wolf, are you saying that Wild Wolf's family is already poor? And that little gangster has harassed Wild Wolf's sister many times in the past. Wild Wolf was Hu Zi's code name in the Lone Wolf Commandos when he was alive. Yes, Sha Ruofei said. That little hooligan insulted the Wild Wolf and the family of the martyrs today. Guo Zan's voice was cold. Yes, I understand, Guo Zan said. I'll handle this. You should do as you deem fit. I only have two requests. First, don't kill anyone. Second, don't forget that you're part of the Lone Wolf Commandos. Guo Zan's tone was very calm. However, Sha Ruofei had been with Guo Zan for so many years. He knew very well that once Guo Zan spoke in this tone, it meant that he was really angry, and someone was going to suffer. Understood, Sha Ruofei said without hesitation. With Guo Zan's words, Sha Ruofei had nothing to worry about. He hung up with a relaxed expression. Li Zhengyi and Zhang Cheng looked at Sha Ruofei fiercely, but Sha Ruofei ignored them and held the auxiliary policeman hostage, a cold smile on his lips. Little Island Village was not far from town. Soon, a police car with a siren drove into the courtyard of the Linhai Town Police Station. As soon as the car stopped, Li Zhengyi jumped out and shouted. Men, come out. All of you, little Wang, go to the gun warehouse and take out all the guns and distribute them to everyone. When the police officers in the police station heard Li Zhengyi's shouting, they all ran out of their offices. A police officer with two arrowheads and a one-star rank also hurried out. He frowned and asked, Deputy Director Li, what's going on? This was Li Zhengyi's immediate superior, Su Ruowu, the director of the Linhai Town Police Station. Director Su, something terrible has happened. A suspect has taken our auxiliary police officer hostage during the escort. He's in the police car right now. Li Zhengyi said quickly. What? Su Ruowu was shocked. He glanced at Zhang Cheng, who had gotten out of the car with Li Zhengyi. He frowned slightly and asked. This is your nephew, right? Why is he in the car? Li Zhengyi's expression froze slightly. His eyes darted around before he said. Director Su, Zhang Cheng is the victim. He was beaten up in Little Island Village this morning. I brought him to identify the suspect. A trace of dissatisfaction appeared on Su Ruowu's face. He knew very well what kind of person Zhang Cheng was. He had also heard about Li Zhengyi's dirty involvement in Little Island Village, but Li Zhengyi was usually sensible and never violated his interests, so he turned a blind eye. He did not expect the matter to blow up so much this time. Even the auxiliary police were being held hostage. If he did not handle this well and cause the matter to blow up, he would definitely lose his reputation if someone died. However, at this moment, Su Ruowu was not in the mood to ask about Li Zhengyi's matters. He came to the police car with a solemn expression and shouted after checking the situation. Will you release our comrade first, lad? Are you powerful enough to call the shots here? Sha Ruofei asked calmly. I'm Su Ruowu, the director of the Linhai Police Station. I'm the person in charge here. You can feedback anything to me. Don't go to the extreme. Su Ruowu quickly said. Sha Ruofei pursed his lips and said. Then open the door. Su Ruowu was stunned for a moment. 
He did not expect this suspect who was holding the auxiliary police hostage to be so easy to talk to. After a moment, he reacted and hurriedly gestured for a police officer to open the door from the back of the police car. As soon as the door opened, the other auxiliary police officer in the iron cage rushed out as if he had been pardoned. Shah Ruofei only smiled faintly and ignored him. He said, Chower, support Auntie and follow me closely. The matter had already blown up, and Lin Chao had no idea what to do. At this moment, Shah Ruofei was the support for the two of them, so she quickly nodded. Shah Ruofei gently nudged the auxiliary policeman again and said, Let's go. Thus, Shah Ruofei used the handcuffs to strangle the auxiliary police officer, and the two of them got out of the police car one after another. Lin Chao supported her mother and followed closely behind Sha Ruofei. As soon as the group got out of the car, Li Zhengyi felt as if he was facing a great enemy and instinctively reached for his gun at the side. He pulled it out and pointed it at Sha Ruofei. Release him immediately. Zhang Cheng also said proudly. You're dead this time, boy. Sha Ruofei pursed his lips and exerted a little force with his hand. The kidnapped auxiliary police officer immediately let out a scream like a pig being slaughtered. The purple-red mark on the auxiliary police officer's neck was shocking. It was obvious how strong Sha Ruofei's hand was. Put your guns away. Su Ruowu glared at Li Zhengyi and Zhang Cheng unhappily, then hurriedly said to Sha Ruofei, Young man, don't be rash. Let's talk things over. Only then did Sha Ruofei relax a little and say lightly. Inspector Su, I need an interview room. Young man, shouldn't you release the person first? Su Ruowu advised. You can feed back any situation to me. There's no need to use this method. I don't want to repeat myself. Sha Ruofei interrupted Su Ruowu impatiently. You, Su Ruowu could not help but feel embarrassed by the young man's retort. However, given the current situation, Su Ruowu had no other choice. Scowling, he nodded and said. Okay. Come with me. With that, he personally led the way. Sha Ruofei held the auxiliary police hostage and followed behind. Lin Chao and Hu Zi's mother followed closely behind Sha Ruofei. Li Zhengyi and the gang of policemen looked at each other, but there was nothing they could do. Soon, Su Ruowu opened the door of an interrogation room and said, So this is our interrogation room, lad. Sha Ruofei nodded slightly and gestured for Lin Chao and her mother to enter first. Then, he also walked in with the auxiliary policeman. As soon as he entered the room, Sha Ruofei kicked the door of the interrogation room and closed it tightly. Su Ruowu did not give up in asking. Young man, let's talk this through. There's nothing that can't be resolved. You don't have to resort to such extreme measures, do you? Attacking a police officer is a serious crime. It's not too late to stop. Sha Ruofei pursed his lips and said. Director Su, there's plenty of time to talk, but not now. Just wait. Don't worry, as long as you don't act rashly, I won't hurt your subordinate. At this point, Sha Ruofei paused and added. By the way, here's a piece of advice. You should take the initiative and deal with some problems as early as possible. When it's too late to settle them, you'll regret it. After that, no matter what Su Ruowu said, Sha Ruofei ignored him and stayed in the interrogation room calmly. After Su Ruowu probed a few times and saw that Sha Ruofei did not respond, he could only instruct the police to guard it tightly before leaving the interrogation room resentfully. He walked up to Li Zhengyi with a furious expression and scolded him. Li Zhengyi was stunned and wanted to explain, but he could not get a word in. After cursing enough, Su Ruowu asked hatefully, Tell me, how do we end this now? Li Zhengyi thought for a moment, then said, Director Su, actually, we can look at the bright side. Although this kid has a hostage, we blocked him in the interrogation room. Even if he has three heads and six arms, he won't be able to escape. Are you stupid? He doesn't even want to escape, okay. Su Ruowu couldn't help but get angry again. It was obvious that Sha Ruofei wanted an interrogation room because he wanted to use the location to deal with the police. The interrogation room had no windows, only a steel door. The room had almost no blind spots, and with a hostage in his hand, he was practically invincible. Well, Li Zhengyi was lost for words for a moment. Then he said, Director Su, we'll have to ask the county office for help. Let the criminal police brigade deal with him. Su Ruowu looked at Li Zhengyi and wanted to slap him. 
If this matter was reported to the county office, no matter what the outcome was, he as a supervisor would definitely be held responsible. However, the police station really could not handle the situation. Su Ruawu thought for a moment and said coldly, You're the one who caused this. Call the county office and report this. After saying that, Su Ruawu turned around and left without looking back. However, Su Ruawu was only thinking about shirking his responsibility and had completely ignored Sha Ruofei's meaningful last few words. Director Su, Li Jungi called weakly from behind, but Su Ruawu did not stop walking and ignored him. Li Jungi and Zhang Cheng looked at each other. Cheng, you've screwed me over this time. Uncle, Zhang Cheng gritted his teeth and said, since Director Su has said so, let's inform the county office. This kid has committed a huge crime. It's enough to kill him on the spot. Quote, Zhang Cheng had long hated Sha Ruofei to the core and wanted him dead. To him, the current situation was a very good opportunity. As for how Su Ruowu and Li Zhengyi would be dealt with, he did not care at all. Li Zhengyi sighed and said, That's the only way. I'll call Chief Zheng. He picked up his phone and went to the side to call Chief Zheng. Meanwhile, hundreds of kilometers away in Jinling, a huge storm was brewing. The target of the storm was this small Linhai town police station. At the joint office of the Jinling War Zone, there was a sharp squeal of brakes and a mud-spattered SUV command vehicle screeched to a halt. A colonel in woodland camouflage, with his face still painted, jumped out of the car and hurried into the staff office building. In the joint staff operations department, the colonel, covered in mud, came straight to the minister's office. Report, he shouted energetically. When he received permission, he pushed open the door and went in. Chief, the colonel called out with a crisp lean to as he entered the room. There was a middle-aged man of about 50-year-old sitting behind the desk. He had a gold-flecked rank of Major General on his crisp uniform. The Major General was slightly surprised to see the colonel. He asked, Guo Zan, shouldn't you be training with the wolf cubs at the Green Cloud Mountain Base? Why did you suddenly come back? Guo Zan was the captain of the Lone Wolf Commando team, codenamed, Wolf King. He said, Chief, I have an emergency to report to you. One of our brothers who retired this year has run into a little trouble. Retired this year, I remember that during this year, you only recruited people and didn't have anyone who retired, the Major General said in confusion, but then he reacted and raised his eyebrows. You mean the Blood Wolf? The Blood Wolf who voluntarily withdrew from active service because he was terminally ill. Yes, Chief, Guo Zan said. What happened to him? Did he encounter some problems? The Major General asked, sitting up a little straighter. For Guo Zan to rush over from the training base in the suburbs in such a hurry, without even having time to change out from his muddy camouflage uniform, this matter must not be small. As the head of the Lone Wolf Commando, the Major General knew that his soldiers were all killing machines. If they were to be treated unfairly when they retired to the local area, it was very likely that their killing intent would be aroused and cause serious social harm. Even though the soldier was terminally ill, the Major General did not doubt his lethality. Chief, this matter has something to do with Wild Wolf, Guo Zan said. Wild Wolf, the Major General looked wistful. You mean Comrade Lin Hu, who died at the border two years ago? Yes, Guo Zan said. Lin Hu and Sha Ruofei are from the same hometown and are best brothers. Moreover, Lin Hu sacrificed himself to save Sha Ruofei, so Sha Ruofei has deep feelings for Lin Hu and his family. After he retired, he went to the small island village where Lin Hu's family lived to visit Lin Hu's mother. Guo Zan briefed the Major General on what had happened. The Major General's face grew uglier as he listened. When he heard that the deputy director of the small police station had actually spoken rudely and said, how much is the family of a martyr worth? He finally couldn't hold back his anger. He slammed the table and stood up. Bastards. My soldiers sacrificed their lives at the border to protect these lawless bastards. If the wild wolf knew about this in the underworld, how disappointed would he be? Chief, calm down. Guo Zan quickly stood up and said, I can't calm down. The Major General was furious, his face cold and murderous. He said, Guo Zan, I'll handle this matter personally. If the local authorities don't give me a satisfactory explanation, I'll personally go over and destroy that bullshit police station. Yes, Guo Zan said, saluting. There was a hint of excitement in his eyes. He was very clear about the background of the chief. 
he was definitely more than just a major general in the military. This time, the chief was really angry, and he was going to take action personally. Li Zhengyi, Zhang Cheng, and the others were going to be in deep trouble this time. The major general made several calls in front of Guo Zan. Guo Zan did not know who the chief had called, but he could infer from the few words he had heard that the people on the other end of the line were of extraordinary status. Some were from the local area and some were in the military. The chief, who only had the rank of major general, was also very solemn in his conversation. He was obviously very angry. After the telephone call the major general leaned back in his chair and said, Go get yourself a glass of water. Stay here and wait for the news. If I'm not satisfied with today's matter, I'll go to the southeast province with you. Yes, thank you, chief. Guo Zan puffed out his chest. Ellipsis. The major general's phone calls had already caused an uproar in southeast province. In the Three Mountains City Government Office building, Mayor Tian Hillen was signing a document with a slight frown when the red phone on her desk rang urgently. Tian Hillen put down her pen and reached for the phone. Discover new chapters at Novelbent.com. Hello, Secretary Lin. Hello, yes, 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 understood, I'll be right there. After hanging up the phone, Tian Hillen's expression became extremely solemn. Secretary Lin of the Provincial Party Committee had personally called, and it even involved a military conflict. Most importantly, it had happened in the jurisdiction of her three mountain city. How could this matter be small? She pressed the internal intercom and said, Little Wu, come in for a while. There was a soft knock on the office door. Secretary Wu Likian pushed it open and said, You wanted to see me, Mayor. Little Wu, inform Comrade Chen Bo from the Municipal Public Security Bureau and Commissar Wu Wai from the garrison to come to the municipal government immediately. It's an urgent matter. Also, get Little Zhang to prepare the car. When Director Chen and Commissar Wu arrive, we have to set off immediately. Tell them that I'll tell them in detail on the way. Okay, I'll do it right away. Wu Likian replied. Tian Hillen's expression was very serious as she spoke. It was obvious that something big had happened. Furthermore, she had specially informed Commissar Wu of the garrison, which meant that this matter was very likely to involve the military. Wu Likian naturally did not dare to delay and quickly returned to her office to make a call. Ten minutes later, four cars drove out of the city government building and sped in the direction of Linhai Town in Changping County. Two of the four cars had military plates, one had police plate, and the other was Tian Hillen's Audi. Among the two military vehicles, other than Commissar Wu's from the garrison area, there was also a cadre who was in charge of dealing with special retired personnel. Ellipsis. While Tian Hillen was rushing towards Linhai Town with the relevant personnel, another large group of police officers arrived at the small Linhai Town police station. These police officers were all armed with guns. They were police officers from the City Public Security Bureau's Criminal Police Brigade. The leader of the team was Deputy Director Jung of the Municipal Public Security Bureau. Little Li, what's wrong with you? How did such a big mess happen? Deputy Chief Jung frowned and questioned as soon as he got out of the car. Su Ruowu and Li Zhengyi were already waiting in the courtyard. At this moment, Su Ruowu looked down and clearly did not intend to make a move. Li Zhengyi had no choice but to bite the bullet and explain. Chief Zheng, I would like to reflect on this matter. We don't know enough about the danger of this suspect, and we were careless during the escort. Deputy Chief Zheng waved his hand and interrupted Li Zhengyi. This is no time for pursuing responsibilities. The point is to solve the problem. Have you talked to the suspect? New chapters will be fully updated at November E.L. Bint.com. We've made some efforts, but he won't respond no matter what we say. He's obviously prepared to put up a stiff resistance, said Li Zhengyi. Deputy Chief Zheng snorted and said, he's simply lawless. He's too arrogant. Let's go. I'll go meet him first. Little G, get your snipers in position. Yes, replied Captain Ji Hua. The backup police officers had already surrounded the interrogation room. Under Deputy Chief Zheng's orders, the two snipers quickly occupied the sniping position. Unfortunately, the interrogation room's terrain was special. There was no way to find the suspect through the small visitation hole. Deputy Chief Zheng came to the door of the interrogation room and said loudly, People inside, listen up. 
I'm the deputy director of the Chengping County Public Security Bureau, Zheng Xiaodong. You're already surrounded by the police. I advise you not to have any wishful thinking. Release the hostages immediately and we will give lenient charges. When Sha Ruofei heard Deputy Chief Zheng's shout in the interrogation room, he pursed his lips in disdain and could not be bothered with him. On the other hand, when Hu Zi's mother heard that the leaders of the county's public security bureau were here, she knew that this matter had blown up. The worry on her face deepened. She looked at Sha Ruofei anxiously and said, Ruofei, auntie, don't worry, nothing will happen. I've already made arrangements, Sha Ruofei said with a smile. Deputy Chief Zheng was still shouting outside, but Sha Ruofei turned a deaf ear to him. Instead, he looked at Lin Chao and said, By the way, Chao'er, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. It's not the weekend. Why are you at home? Huh? Lin Chao was stunned. She did not expect Sha Ruofei to be in the mood to care about such a small matter at a time like this. It was Hu Zi's mother who said with a sigh, Sigh, isn't this all because of me? Chower hasn't been to school for two weeks in order to take care of me, this wretched girl doesn't listen to me at all. No matter how I persuade her, she's unwilling to return to school. She said that she wants to drop out of school and go home to take care of me. Lin Chao's eyes turned red. Mom, you're so sick. How can I leave you alone? Sha Ruofei had already guessed the answer, but after personally confirming it, he could not help but frown and say. Chower, you should be in your third year of high school this year. The college entrance examination is next semester, so your studies can't be delayed, there shouldn't be any major problems with auntie's health now. She'll recover soon. After this matter is resolved, go back to school and attend classes. Do you hear me? I understand, brother Ruofei, Lin Chao lowered her head and said, but now. I told you, nothing will happen. Sha Ruofei smiled faintly. You don't trust brother Ruofei. I believe you. Lin Chao looked up at Sha Ruofei and said seriously. Sha Ruofei smiled and nodded. Deputy Chief Zheng, who was outside the door, spoke righteously but did not receive any response. He could not help but fly into a rage out of humiliation and shout sternly. People inside, listen up. If you continue to resist, we'll organize a strong attack immediately. I heard that you have an old woman and a girl with you. If the situation gets out of control and they get hurt. Sha Ruofei frowned and raised his voice. They're innocent. They had nothing to do with this. They were illegally arrested by the police who abused their powers. HMPH. Since it has nothing to do with them, let them out first. Deputy Chief Jung snorted. Bullsh T. Sha Ruofei said without thinking. If they go out, you guys would arrest them, and I would be under threat. Do you think I'm stupid? Have you lived your life in vain? Just now, Deputy Chief Zheng had actually used Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao's safety to threaten Sha Ruofei. This made Sha Ruofei quite unhappy, so he naturally did not show any mercy. You, Deputy Chief Zheng was so angry that he almost exploded. This kid is indeed stubborn. Deputy Chief Zheng said to Ji Hua, the captain of the criminal police force, who was beside him. Inform Team 1 to prepare to attack. Ask the snipers to closely monitor the situation. If there's an opportunity, they can directly kill the three suspects without asking for instructions. This included Lin Chao and Hu Zi's mother. When Sha Ruofei heard this in the interrogation room, a cold glint flashed across his eyes. Well, Ji Hua hesitated. After all, there was an auxiliary police hostage inside. But when he saw Deputy Director Zheng's stern gaze, he immediately said, yes. After another three to four minutes, Sha Ruofei heard Deputy Chief Zheng say fiercely. Break the door down. Not good. Sha Ruofei knew that Deputy Chief Zheng was really prepared to take the risk and attack forcefully. Once they rushed in, he was confident that he could escape unscathed, but he would definitely not be able to protect Lin Chao and Hu Zi's mother. Without hesitation, he struck the auxiliary police's carotid artery with the flat of his hand. The man crumpled to the ground without even a grunt. Sha Ruofei quickly rushed out. At this moment, the police outside had already started banging on the door. Sha Ruofei hurriedly used his shoulder to block the metal door. The police had brought specialized assault equipment, and the impact on the iron door was getting stronger. It almost broke open several times, but fortunately, Sha Ruofei gritted his teeth and held on. Wolf King, are you reliable? I can't hold on anymore. 
Sha Ruofei gritted his teeth and held on as he complained in his heart. After they banged eight or nine times, Sha Ruofei felt like his bones were about to fall apart. He knew that with such strength, the iron door would be completely broken open in three more hits at most. The situation was not good. Sha Ruofei could not help but frown. At this moment, a female voice shouted authoritatively from outside. Stop right now. What are you doing? It was Tian Hillen, who had rushed to the Linhai Police Station with the Public Security Bureau, the Southeast Province Military District, and the Three Mountains Police Team. Tian Hillen's heart skipped a beat when she saw the armed police surrounding the police station. When she saw a few police officers at the entrance of the interrogation room charging at the door with equipment, and Deputy Director Zheng of the Chengping County Public Security Bureau, who was in charge of the scene, still holding a gun in his hand, urging the police officers to speed up the process with a ferocious expression, she could not help but be furious and shout at them to stop. Deputy Chief Zheng was furious because of Sha Ruofei's attitude. In addition, he was the leader of the county office, so he scolded without turning his head. FCK, who dares to stop me? You must be tired of living. Wen Chen Bo, the director of the Municipal Public Security Bureau, who had come with Tian Hillen, saw this, he was almost scared out of his wits. He hurriedly took a step forward and shouted, Zheng Xiaodong, who are you scolding? The words that come out of your mouth are all vulgarities. Do you still have the demeanor of a party member? How outrageous. Deputy Director Zheng Xiaodong was just overwhelmed with anger. In addition, a bureaucrat of his level did not have much chance to come into contact with the city leaders, so he was not familiar with Tian Hillen's voice. However, Chen Bo was his direct supervisor, the boss of the city's public security bureau. How could he not recognize Chen Bo's voice? Zheng Xiaodong trembled and turned around in shock. Only then did he realize that there was a group of people standing behind him, all glaring at him. One of them was a middle-aged woman in a black business suit. Her face was dark and her eyes were cold. Meanwhile, his boss, Chen Bo, and a senior colonel officer accompanied the middle-aged woman on both sides. Even a fool could tell that this woman's status was even more impressive than Chief Chen's. Immediately after, a bolt from the blue struck Zhang Xiaodong's mind because the more he looked at this woman, the more familiar she looked. This, wasn't this Mayor Tian, who appeared in the Three Mountains news every day. Did I curse at Mayor Tian just now? And I cursed her so badly. Zhang Xiaodong's mind went blank. Beads of sweat rolled down his forehead and his face turned extremely pale. Chief Chen, I, I, Zheng Xiaodong stammered with a pale face. Chen Bo glanced at Zheng Xiaodong as if he was looking at a dead man and snorted coldly without saying anything. In Chen Bo's opinion, Zheng Xiaodong was indeed no different from a dead person. Now that the highest-ranked official here was Tian Hillen, he naturally wouldn't overstep his boundaries. Tian Hillen asked coldly, Who are you? Zhang Xiaodong quickly said, Reporting, reporting to Mayor Tian, I'm the deputy director of the Chengping County Public Security Bureau, Zhang Xiaodong, I didn't know. Usually, if the leader asked for his name and position, Zhang Xiaodong would definitely be overjoyed because this meant that the leader had an impression of him. But that day, Zhang Xiaodong felt as if he had lost his soul. He had left an impression, and it was extremely deep, but it was an extremely bad one. Sure enough, Tian Hillen was not interested in listening to Zhang Xiaodong's explanation at all. She directly interrupted him and asked, Deputy Chief Zhang, what were you doing just now? Zhang Xiaodong glanced at the interrogation room in surprise, and a ridiculous thought appeared in his mind. Could Mayor Tian, Chief Chen, and the others be here for that fellow inside? But he dismissed the idea in an instant, because it was indeed ridiculous. Besides, Li Zhengyi had reported to him that the two women were the daughter and widow living on the little island village. How could they have alerted the mayor? Mayor Tian must have been doing a sudden inspection and happened to be here. Zheng Xiaodong firmed up his thoughts and quickly organized his words in his mind before saying, Mayor Tian, I'm leading a team to deal with an emergency. A suspect kidnapped one of our police officers during the escort. We've already cornered him in the interrogation room and are preparing to attack. Just now, just now, because the situation was complicated, I, I didn't know that you were here, so please forgive me. Tian Hillen's expression did not change at all. She did not comment on Zheng Xiaodong's explanation and only continued to ask. A suspect. 
What's his name? Zheng Xiaodong really did not know Sha Ruofei's name. Hearing this, he quickly looked at Su Ruowu and Li Zhengyi. Su Ruowu immediately lowered his gaze and pretended not to see it. Li Zhengyi forced himself to come out and say, Mayor, the suspect's name is Sha Ruofei. He's suspected of causing trouble. When she heard Sha Ruofei's name, Tian Hilin raised her eyebrows and her expression finally changed a little. When Secretary Wu Likian, who was half a body's length behind Tian Hilin, heard this name, she could not help but be slightly stunned and revealed a thoughtful expression. The one thing that Tian Hilin had asked her to do in the morning was to find out the identity of the young man who had saved Professor Tian. Wu Likian had basically found out everything, but before she could report to Tian Hilin, she had to follow Tian Hilin to deal with the unexpected incident. According to Wu Likian's investigation, the young man's name was Sha Ruofei, and he had taken a bus to Changping County in the morning. Could it be the same person? Wu Likian thought to herself. As Wu Likian's mind raced, Tian Hilin's expression changed slightly. Then, she asked calmly, Deputy Chief Zheng, how were you going to deal with this sudden incident? Zheng Xiaodong immediately puffed out his chest and said, Reporting to Mayor Tian, the criminal suspect is extremely vicious. Not only did he beat up the villagers, but he also kidnapped police officers during the escort. He can be said to be lawless and extremely dangerous to society. Therefore, I have already ordered the criminal police brigade to organize a strong attack and authorized snipers to kill the suspects if necessary. Mayor Tian, the scene is very dangerous. Please take a seat in the lounge upstairs for the time being. Our Chengping County Public Security Bureau is confident and capable of handling this sudden incident well. If he didn't express his resolve, when would he be able to show it? In Zheng Xiaodong's opinion, whether he could make up for his mistake depended on this. It would be best if he could kill the suspect cleanly and let the mayor see his capability. Perhaps she would let bygones be bygones. However, he did not see that Tian Hilin's expression was getting uglier. As soon as Zheng Xiaodong finished speaking, a lieutenant colonel beside Tian Hilin suddenly said angrily. Bolsh T. A bunch of useless officials. You are even going to shoot a suspect. If Sha Ruofei loses a single hair, I'll shoot you. Zheng Xiaodong was dumbfounded by this sudden scolding. After a while, he stammered. How? How? How can you curse at me? The lieutenant colonel's eyes widened. It's a light punishment to even curse at you. You're lucky I didn't slap you. You, Zheng Xiaodong was, after all, the leader of the county's public security bureau and a leading officer of the main branch. He naturally couldn't maintain his dignity after being scolded like this, and his face turned red and white. However, with Tian Hilin, Chen Bo, and the other leaders here, he did not dare to flare up at all. He could only put on an aggrieved expression. The lieutenant colonel glared at Zheng Xiaodong before turning around and saying, Mayor Tian, Commissar Wu, Director Chen, I'm sorry, I didn't control my emotions. Tian Hilin smiled and said, It's fine, Director Niu, we're all here to hold the line for you. You still have to handle this matter. This lieutenant colonel was Officer Niu Dao, who was in charge of the special retired personnel. Although he was called an officer, his rank was not low. Tian Hilin was not just being respectful when she called him, Director Niu. Among the leaders of this line of work, Tian Hilin, Wu Wai, and Chen Bo were all representing the Three Mountain City government. Even though Wu Wai was the political commissar of the garrison, he was also a member of the Three Mountain City Committee. This time, he was called over mainly because the military was involved. The one who was really in charge of handling this matter was Niu Dao. Niu Dao represented the provincial military region and had accepted the direct order from the Jinling War Zone to handle this matter. Therefore, Niu Dao did not stand on ceremony. He nodded at Tian Hilin and the others, then walked forward and pulled Zheng Xiaodong away. He came to the door of the interrogation room and said, Comrade Sha Ruofei, I'm Niu Dao from the provincial military. Please open the door and let him go. Don't worry, we'll definitely seek justice for you. As soon as Niu Dao said this, Zheng Xiaodong and Li Zhengyi's faces turned pale. The two of them looked at each other and saw the deep shock in each other's eyes. The last thing they wanted had happened. The city leaders and the military were actually all here for that fellow inside. They had hit an iron nail. At this moment, Zheng Xiaodong even had the intention to kill Li Zhengyi. 
It was one thing for him to court death, but now, he had actually dragged him down with him. And he was still foolishly trying to, perform, in front of Mayor Tian. This time, he was really done for. Then a lazy voice came from the interrogation room. Are you one just because you said so? Why should I believe you? Niu Dao smiled bitterly, as expected of Guo Zan's most valued soldier. Even his tone was equally annoying. Niu Dao sighed and leaned over to the peephole. He lowered his voice a little and said, Blood Wolf, stop playing, I'm your senior after all. Can you give me some face? When he heard the words, Blood Wolf, Sha Ruofei's heart finally relaxed. It was impossible to know the code names of the Lone Wolf Special Forces unless one was an insider. Moreover, Sha Ruofei had also heard the commotion outside the door clearly. He did not think that Zheng Xiaodong would put on such a show just to capture him alive. After all, he was about to succeed in breaking down the door just now. Click. As everyone watched, the steel door to the interrogation room opened. First to appear in the doorway was the auxiliary policeman who staggered out after his release, a look of utter horror on his face. Get the latest novels at Note v. Elbent Com. Then, Sha Ruofei swaggered out, followed by Lin Chao and Hu Zi's mother. Sha Ruofei walked up to Niu Dao and sized him up. His expression changed slightly as he asked, Are you Fire Wolf? Niu Dao said wryly, Looks like there's still a picture of me in the hall. It turned out that Niu Dao was also from the Lone Wolf Commando team, codenamed Fire Wolf. He was a soldier in the same year as the Wolf King, Guo Zan, who was also his life and death partner. However, Niu Dao had been seriously injured in battle ten years ago, and his body was left with injuries. He was not suitable to serve in the special forces, so he took the initiative to be transferred to the provincial military system to be in charge of special retired personnel. The eyes of the special forces soldiers were naturally quite sharp. Although Sha Ruofei had only seen Niu Dao's youthful appearance ten years ago, he still recognized him. Sha Ruofei stood at attention and raised his head and puffed out his chest in a standard military salute. Good day, chief. Niu Dao returned the salute and said, Comrade Sha Ruofei, you have suffered. After Sha Ruofei saluted, he returned to his lazy appearance and smiled. Fire Wolf, since you're my senior, do me a favor. What is it? Tell me. Niu Dao agreed readily. Help me take responsibility for what happened today, Sha Ruofei said. Niu Dao had an ominous feeling, but Sha Ruofei didn't give him time to react. After saying that, he shot out and arrived in front of Zheng Xiaodong in a flash. Sha, was all Niu Dao could manage. Slap. In front of the city leaders, the garrison leader, and a large group of police officers, Sha Ruofei slapped Zheng Xiaodong hard on the face. This slap was extremely heavy. Zheng Xiaodong was sent flying before landing heavily on the ground. He spat out two molars from his mouth and his cheek swelled up visibly. There was dead silence. Everyone was stunned, but Sha Ruofei did not stop. He walked forward and grabbed Zheng Xiaodong's collar. He slapped him twice again and said. The first one was for Hu Zi. The other two were for Anti and Chower. You, you, are too arrogant, too arrogant. Zheng Xiaodong was in pain and angry as he trembled. Sha Ruofei looked at Zheng. Xiaodong disdainfully and said, I'm arrogant. Deputy Chief Zheng was so impressive just now. He even wanted to kill a weak woman on the spot. I've said many times that they're from the family of martyrs and are victims. They have nothing to do with what happened today. What did you do? Huh? Niu Dao originally wanted to stop Sha Ruofei. After all, it was still inappropriate to hit Zheng Xiaodong in front of the leaders of Three Mountain City. Even if Zheng Xiaodong's political career was probably over, he was still a civil servant. However, when he heard Sha Ruofei mention the word, family of martyrs, his expression immediately turned serious. He strode over to Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao and asked, Are you the family of comrade Lin Hu? Hu Zi's mother nodded. Niu Dao immediately saluted them both and said, Hello, auntie, I'm sorry, we didn't do our job well and made you suffer. No, no, it's okay, Hu Zi's mother quickly waved her hand and said. Niu Dao was in his thirties and was almost forty years old. Furthermore, he was a lieutenant colonel. She really felt a little at a loss as to what to do when he directly called her auntie. Niu Dao said with a smile. Auntie, although I've never worked with comrade Lin Hu before, Hu Zi's unit is my old unit. We're all brothers and sisters in the unit. 
Now that Hu Zi is gone, we're your family. I'm working in Three Mountain City now. If your family has any difficulties in the future, feel free to look for me. Okay, okay, thank you, Hu Zi's mother said with red rimmed eyes. Lin Chao also thanked Niu Dao obediently. After exchanging pleasantries with Hu Zi's mother, Niu Dao walked up to Sha Ruofei and asked, Ruofei, who else insulted the martyrs? Sha Ruofei's gaze swept across the uneasy Li Zhengyi, and a cold smile appeared on his lips. He pointed at him and said, And this deputy director Li, he was the one who arrested Auntie and Chower. Niu Dao's eyes turned cold. He turned to Tian Hillen and said, Mayor Tian, I'm sorry. I'll reflect on today's matter and report to the military chief when I get back. Director Niu, what, do you mean? Tian Hillen asked with a slight frown. Just now, Sha Ruofei had directly taught Zheng Xiaodong a lesson, which had already made Tian Hillen a little unhappy. She was a member of the system, and what she paid the most attention to were rules. And Sha Ruofei's rash behavior just now made her very unhappy. Even though she knew that Sha Ruofei had been wrong that day and even if Secretary Lin from the Provincial Committee personally paid attention to him, it still could not change Tian Hillen's opinion of Sha Ruofei. Now that Niu Dao was obviously going to make trouble, Tian Hillen felt a little aggrieved as someone who was supposed to settle the matter. Niu Dao smiled and did not answer Tian Hillen. Instead, he strode towards Li Zhengyi. Li Zhengyi was also holding a gun in his hand, he was the most proactive when Zhang Xiaodong commanded the attack just now. Now that he saw Niu Dao striding towards him, he retreated in fear and said, What? What do you want? Niu Dao came forward and grabbed Li Zhengyi's wrist, neatly removing his gun. Seeing this, Sha Ruofei grinned and said, Fire wolf, not bad. You didn't fall behind in your skills. Niu Dao ignored Sha Ruofei's nonsense and directly kneed Li Zhengyi in the stomach. Li Zhengyi immediately held his stomach and squatted down in pain. Niu Dao followed up with a heavy elbow strike, and Li Zhengyi immediately fell to the ground. Niu Dao stepped forward and stepped on Li Zhengyi's face. He said coldly, How dare a coward like you insult a martyr? Compared to Hu Zi, you're not even a piece of shit. If I hear you being rude again, I'll shoot you. Tian Hillen watched from the side and could not help but frown, feeling increasingly unhappy. At this moment, Wu Likian whispered in Tian Hillen's ear. Tian Hillen asked in surprise. Are you sure? Mayor, I've seen the surveillance videos. I'm sure there's no mistake. And he did take the bus to Changping County today, Wu Likian quickly said. Tian Hillen couldn't help but look at Sha Ruofei a few more times before nodding. I understand. Little Wu, it's been hard on you. After Niu Dao taught Li Zhengyi a lesson, his anger was finally vented. Then, he walked to Tian Hillen and said, Mayor Tian, I'm really sorry. I couldn't control my emotions. I'll take the initiative to report this to the military chief. The organization will deal with me as it should. I definitely won't complain. Tian Hillen looked thoughtfully at Sha Ruofei who was not far away before saying, Director Niu, I didn't see anything just now. Director Chen, Commissar Wu, what about you? Chen Bo and Wu Wei smiled wryly and agreed. Even the mayor had said so, what else could they say? Niu Dao was also quite surprised. He did not expect this female mayor, who was known for being strict, to let them go so easily. He was prepared to be punished. Tian Hillen nodded and walked over to Sha Ruofei. Her expression became friendly as she asked, Little Sha, please tell us in detail what happened today. Our comrades from the army are also here. We will definitely uphold justice for you. Originally, Tian Hillen had some displeasure regarding Sha Ruofei's rashness, but now that she knew that this young man was her father's savior, that little bit of unhappiness had long flown out of her mind. Sha Ruofei nodded and said, Dear leaders, I've really troubled everyone today. Here's what happened. Sha Ruofei told them everything that had happened after he arrived at Little Island Village. Tian Hillen listened attentively, and her expression grew uglier. Under her rule, the deputy director of the police station had actually colluded with local hooligans and tyrants to run rampant in the countryside. The deputy director of the Public Security Bureau did not distinguish between right and wrong and enforced the law violently. No leader would be happy after knowing this. Especially after hearing Sha Ruofei say that Li Zhengyi and Zhang Xiaodong had insulted the martyrs and their families, Tian Hillen was even more furious. 
She even lost her usual composure and directly showed her anger on her face. Because in fact, Tian Hillen was also a family of the martyr. Her husband had been a police officer. The year her daughter had been born, her husband had been killed in the pursuit of a fugitive. All these years, Tian Hillen had not started a family again. She knew how difficult it was for a family without a pillar. And to this day, she missed her husband deeply. Now that she heard Li Zhengyi, who was also a police officer, say such insulting words, how could Tian Hillen endure her anger? She said angrily, this is simply nonsense. Chief Chen, we have to investigate this matter thoroughly. Also, the village hooligans from Little Island Village are so rampant. You have to establish a special task force to deal with them severely. In addition, I think it's necessary for your public security bureau to conduct an in-depth reorganization. Those who have problems should be removed from their positions, those who should leave should go, and those who have problems should be transferred to the judiciary immediately. Yes, Chen Bo replied immediately. Zhang Xiaodong, Li Zhengyi, and the others' faces were pale and their hearts were dead. None of them were free from these involvements. Now that such a thing had happened, they would definitely be severely punished by the law. After swiftly arranging the work, Tian Hillen turned to Sha Ruofei and the others. Before she could speak, Sha Ruofei suddenly called out, Zhang Cheng, where are you going? With that, he strode over and grabbed Zhang Cheng, who was about to slip away. Sha Ruofei carried Zhang Cheng back to the yard of the police station like he was carrying a chicken. He threw him on the ground and said, Chief Chen, this is Zhang Cheng, the bully from Little Island Village. He's also Li Zhengyi's nephew. When Li Zhengyi captured us just now, Zhang Cheng was sitting in a police car. When Chen Bo heard this, he no longer hesitated. He immediately waved his hand and instructed the Chengping County Police Force to capture Zhang Cheng. Although these police officers had followed Zhang Xiaodong here, Chen Bo was the head of the city bureau, so they naturally had to obey his orders. Tian Hillen then said, Comrade Sha Ruofei and two ladies, it's our fault that the Public Security Bureau did not manage the internal department strictly. A black sheep has appeared and made you suffer. On behalf of the Three Mountains City Council, I apologize to you. Mayor, please don't say that. If you hadn't arrived in time, Ruofei and we wouldn't know what to do, Hu Zi's mother said quickly. Although the middle-aged woman had suffered, she harbored no resentment. I heard that your family is in a very difficult financial situation. This is because I didn't do my job as the mayor well. You're the family of a martyr, so you should receive the government's care and help, Tian Hillen said guiltily. Then, she asked in confusion, by the way, our city has always had a comprehensive financial support scheme. There's a monthly allowance for the families of martyrs. You, Hu Zi's mother said in a startled voice. Mayor Tian, I didn't receive any subsidies. After Hu Zi died, the leaders of the army only sent a pension, there hasn't been any since. Sha Ruofei pursed his lips and said, Auntie, it must be the village police who are secretly embezzling money. Isn't Zhang Chang's father the village director? He's definitely not a good person. Tian Hillen said angrily when she heard this. Investigate. We must investigate thoroughly. They even dared to embezzle the money for the families of the martyrs. They're simply crazy. Tian Hillen's words also decided that the Zhang family, which had dominated Little Island Village for many years, was about to face a calamity. The storm was over. Chen Bo, the director of the City Public Security Bureau, stayed behind to clean up the mess while Tian Hillen and the others prepared to return to Three Mountain City. After learning that Sha Ruofei and the other two were also returning to Three Mountain City, they naturally invited them to go with them. Niu Dao was prepared to let Sha Ruofei and the others take his car. They could also reminisce about the troop on the way. But before he could speak, Tian Hillen said, Little Sha, come with me to the car. I have something to ask you, up to dated from no V L B I N C O per meter. Ah, uh, Sha Ruofei was a little stunned, but he immediately replied, okay. He was indeed a little confused. He didn't know why Tian Hillen was looking for him, but since the mayor had already asked, he naturally couldn't refuse. Niu Dao was also a smart person. Seeing this, he quickly said, Auntie, Lin Chao, take my car. My SUV is spacious. Thus, the group separately got into the cars and left. As soon as the car drove out of the gate of Linhai Police Station, Tian Hillen said, 
Thank you, little Shah. Huh. Shah Ruofei was even more confused. Mayor Tian, why are you thanking me for no reason? I should be the one thanking you. Strictly speaking, he had caused quite a bit of trouble. For Tian Hillen that day. Even if he had the right reasons, there was no need for Tian Hillen to thank him. Tian Hillen turned to look at Shah Ruofei with a grateful expression. Did you save an old man with a sudden heart attack this morning at South Station? I did. Shah Ruofei was surprised, but he nodded. How did you know? Tian Hillen smiled and said. That old man is my father. Really? Shah Ruofei was also very surprised. This was really a coincidence. Shah Ruofei then asked with concern, Mayor Tian, how is Professor Tian now? Tian Hillen said. There's nothing serious anymore. The doctor said that it's all thanks to the timely treatment. Otherwise, he might not have made it to the hospital. So, little Shah, our entire family has to thank you. Shah Ruofei said humbly. It's nothing. I just happened to be there. Anyone in that situation would have helped. Seeing that Shah Ruofei was still neither servile nor overbearing, and that he did not take credit for being her father's savior, Tian Hillen's impression of him improved. Tian Hillen said. Little Shah, you can't say that. I heard that my father was in a very dangerous condition when his illness acted up. It was you who gave him medicine to stabilize his condition. At that time, you didn't even leave your name. My father kept reminding me to find you and thank you. Shah Ruofei smiled faintly and said. Mayor Tian, it's really nothing. I just happened to have some Chinese medicine that I concocted myself. It has a certain effect on myocardial infarction. At that time, the situation was urgent, so I took the initiative to give Professor Tian some. Fortunately, the effect was good. You know how to concoct Chinese medicine yourself. Tian Hillen asked in surprise. I used to work with an old Chinese doctor before I joined the army, Sha Ruofei said. How impressive. Tian Hillen praised. Then, she said, little Sha, after my father is discharged in a few days, our entire family wants to treat you to a meal to express our gratitude. Sha Ruofei hurriedly waved his hand. Up to dated novels on novel, bint com. No, no, it's fine. It's really nothing. You don't have to be so kind. Tian Hillen smiled and said. It's just a helping hand for you, but it's a life-saving favor for us. Besides, my father gave me an order. If I can't invite you, I won't be able to explain myself when I go back. At this point, Sha Ruofei could only say helplessly. All right, then, Tian Hillen said with satisfaction. I'll get my secretary, little Wu, to pick you up then. Then, Tian Hillen looked thoughtfully at Sha Ruofei who was dressed simply, and said. Little Shah, you've just retired from the military, so you probably don't have a job yet, right? Also, are you facing any difficulties in life? If you need help, feel free to ask. As long as it doesn't violate the rules of the organization, I'll do it for you. Tian Hillen wanted to return the favor. When Shah Ruofei saved Professor Tian, he had never thought of a repayment, so he subconsciously wanted to reject Tian Hillen's kindness. However, at this moment, a thought flashed through his mind, and he swallowed his words. He thought for a moment, then said, Mayor Tian, if it's possible, I really have something to trouble you with. Go ahead. Tian Hillen smiled. It was good that Sha Ruofei had something to ask of her. The mayor did not want to owe him a huge favor. Sha Ruofei said, Mayor Tian, I'd like you to help me contact a good high school in Three Mountain City. I want to arrange for a friend to transfer here. Tian Hillen thought that Sha Ruofei would ask for a job or something, but she was surprised that he made such a request. Tian Hillen asked curiously, May I know who this friend of yours is? Sha Ruofei smiled and said, Of course. Actually, you've seen her just now. She's Lin Chao. She's the sister of my comrade in arms, Lin Hu. She'll be taking the college entrance examination next semester. Some time ago, she even dropped out of school to take care of her sick mother. I think it would be good for her to continue studying at a reputable high school in the city. Moreover, Auntie will be recuperating in Three Mountain City during this period of time. It will also be convenient for Lin Chao and her daughter to live together when she goes to school in the city. Sha Ruofei paused, then said. Mayor Tian, I personally have no difficulties that I can't overcome. I hope you can help me with this matter. Of course, if it makes things difficult for you, then forget it. 
Sha Ruofei's meaning was very clear. If Tian Hillen helped solve the problem of Lin Chao's school transfer, then this favor would be repaid. Tian Hillen had been in the bureaucracy for so many years, how could she not tell? But because of this, she admired Sha Ruofei even more. If it were someone else, they would definitely want to build a relationship with the mayor or at least gain some benefits for themselves. In fact, with Tian Hillen's current status, it was easy for her to help Sha Ruofei get a job as a civil servant. After all, Sha Ruofei was a retired soldier and a city resident. According to the organization's policy, he could be assigned to a job position. However, Sha Ruofei's attitude had always been neither servile nor overbearing. The only thing he asked for was actually for the sister of his comrade. Tian Hillen looked at Sha Ruofei approvingly and said, All right, I'll help. After saying that, she immediately instructed her secretary, Wu Likian, who was sitting in the front passenger seat. Little Wu, as soon as you go to work tomorrow, settle this matter and get Bureau Chief Lu from the Education Bureau to personally handle it. First, find out which high school is the best for the third year of high school. Then, directly settle the transfer procedures. Yes, Mayor Tian, Wu Likian said immediately. Sha Ruofei was overjoyed and hurriedly said. Thank you so much, Mayor Tian. Tian Hillen waved her hand and said with a faint smile. This is just a small matter. It's really nothing compared to your life-saving grace. By the way, little Sha, which aspect of the job are you more interested in? I can arrange for you to work in the corresponding department. The local authorities will still be very welcome to you outstanding soldiers. Tian Hillen also admired Sha Ruofei's character, so she planned to help him. Unexpectedly, Sha Ruofei only smiled faintly and said, I appreciate Mayor Tian's kindness, but I might be planning to start my own business and don't want to work in a government organization anymore. I see, Tian Hillen was slightly disappointed, but she quickly smiled and said, that's not bad. Young people are driven. It's good to start your own business. As they spoke, the car had already driven into Three Mountain City. After learning that Sha Ruofei was preparing to find a hotel to settle Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao, Tian Hillen immediately instructed the driver to go straight to the city government's guest house. She also asked her secretary, Wu Likian, to call and arrange a suite. Tian Hillen and Niu Dao's car arrived at the city government guest house one after another. Tian Hillen specially arranged for Wu Likian to stay behind before getting into the car and leaving. Secretary Lin of the Provincial Party Committee was still waiting to hear her report on the process of handling that day's matter. Niu Dao originally wanted to have a good chat with Sha Ruofei about the troops, but that day was obviously not the right time, so after taking down Sha Ruofei's phone number, he also got into the car and left the city government guest house. With the mayor making the arrangements personally, the government guest house naturally had the room ready. Wu Likian asked the guest house to prepare a fruit platter and dinner before politely leaving. Before leaving, Wu Likian expressed that she had already informed the staff. They could stay there for as many days as they wanted. Sha Ruofei also smiled and expressed his gratitude. Of course, he would not let the two of them stay in the government guest house forever. After Lin Chao's school was finalized the next day, he planned to rent a house near the school for the mother and daughter to settle down. That would be the case for the next six months. Everything could be discussed after Lin Chao's college entrance examination. Dinner was sent directly to the room. Sha Ruofei ate with Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao. During the meal, Sha Ruofei talked about the school transfer to the city. When Lin Chao heard that she could go to school and take care of her mother, she agreed without much hesitation. After chatting with the mother and daughter for a while, Sha Ruofei bade farewell and left the city government guest house. He walked back through the night to his rental apartment in the shanty town. Hu Zi's mother's illness would soon be cured, and Sha Ruofei felt a huge weight lifted off his shoulders. Now, all his thoughts were on the succulents. When he returned home, he carefully locked the door, then took out the spiritual map that he had hidden close to his body and entered the space with the DSLR camera. Sha Ruofei was prepared to take photos of the succulent seedlings overnight, then display them up on his online store to sell and officially start his money-making plan. The neatly arranged succulent seedlings in the spiritual space were growing well. Sha Ruofei started to get busy with the brand new DSLR camera. He picked the best looking pot for each type of succulent and started taking photos from multiple angles. 
During the filming, Sha Ruofei used plastic to cover it up to a certain extent. This way, it would look like the photos were taken in a large shed and there was no danger of revealing the secret of the spiritual map space. After taking the photos, Sha Ruofei left the spiritual map space and returned to his room. He imported more than a hundred photos into the computer and then carefully checked them one by one, making sure that he did not inadvertently capture the background in the spiritual space. The next step was to put the merchandise online. This was very tedious work. The price had to be marked, the description for these succulents had to be filled in, and the photos had to be sorted and uploaded. Of course, it was best to edit the photos, but Sha Ruofei was not familiar with PS software, so he could only keep everything simple. Even so, it was already past 2 in the morning when Sha Ruofei, the novice shopkeeper, finished listing all the succulents online. Sha Ruofei could not help but smile in satisfaction when he saw that the webpage of the online store he had created was no longer empty. Instead, there were more than a dozen items on it. Although the shop still looked very simple and there were only a dozen pots of succulents in each pot, Sha Ruofei was still filled with a sense of accomplishment. In terms of pricing, since these were all very rare succulents, and Sha Ruofei did not intend to rely on quantity to win, he wanted to take the high quality route, so the price was set at 888 yuan per pot. The relatively slow growing blooming cages and white skinned moon realm seedlings were directly priced at 1000 yuan. It was already past 2 in the morning, so it was naturally impossible for anyone to visit the online store. Hence, Sha Ruofei prepared to rest after browsing for a while. After washing up, Sha Ruofei fell asleep. He had been busy so late that day that his body was already exhausted. Soon, Sha Ruofei fell asleep. He slept soundly and did not even dream for the entire night. It was past 10 in the morning when Sha Ruofei was woken up by the sound of his phone ringing. Sha Ruofei rubbed his eyes in a daze and reached for the phone on the bedside table to look at the caller ID. Qingxie, disturbing someone's sleep is very immoral, Sha Ruofei picked up the phone with a bitter smile. It was Ling Qingxie. These days, she would call Sha Ruofei when she had nothing to do and talk about her work and life. Previously, although Sha Ruofei did not have much thoughts about Ling Qingxie because he felt that he would not live long in this world, he was still a good listener. Therefore, the two of them were much more familiar with each other than when they were at the Immortal Succulent store that day. In addition, Sha Ruofei's terminal illness had been cured and especially since Hu Zi's mother's uremia was becoming hopeful, he was in a good mood and started joking. Ling Qingxie giggled and said, I knew you were still asleep, you lazy bugger. The sun's shining on your ass. Get up. She paused and then said, Open the door now. Open the door. Sha Ruofei asked, What do you mean? What can it mean? I'm at your door, Ling Qingxie said coquettishly. Huh. Sha Ruofei quickly got out of bed and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sha Ruofei buttoned up his clothes and opened the door. The rental house was divided into many small rooms for different residents. After Sha Ruofei walked out of the room, he walked straight to the door of the entire rental house. He looked through the peephole and saw Ling Qingxie standing in the corridor with a smile. She even looked around from time to time and looked very casual. Sha Ruofei opened the door and looked straight at Ling Qingxie. Qingxie, is your family really in the food and beverage industry? Of cows, are you still in your sleep? Why are you suddenly asking such a strange question? Ling Qingxie asked Sha Ruofei in amusement. Sha Ruofei said, I think running a restaurant is your cover identity. Your family must be in the intelligence business. How can you find such a remote place? How did you get my address, anyway? Only then did Ling Qingxie react and burst out laughing. She rolled her eyes at Sha Ruofei and said, You are making your guest talk at your doorstep. Is that how you treat your guests? Sorry sorry, Sha Ruofei slapped his forehead and stepped aside to let her in. Miss Ling, please come in. That's more like it. Ling Qingxie squeezed her nose cutely. Then, she raised her head slightly and walked past Sha Ruofei into the rental house, bringing with her a fragrance. Sha Ruofei quickly led the way and said, The house is a little messy. I haven't had a chance to clean it up yet. I hope you don't mind. It would be strange if a guy's room wasn't messy. Ling Qingxie said indifferently. Soon, the two of them arrived at Sha Ruofei's room. What surprised Ling Qingxie was that everything in the room was in order. 
Ling Qingxie asked in amusement. Ruofei, you, you call this a messy room? Sha Ruofei scratched his head and chuckled. T0P novel updates on N.O. Velvent Calm. Isn't the blanket unfolded? It was true that he had not had time to fold the blanket when he got up after answering the phone. However, the rest of the house was orderly and the room was almost spotless. There were habits that Sha Ruofei had developed over his years in the military. Ling Qingxie was speechless. She looked round the room. Her pretty face creased slightly as she said, Ruofei, isn't your living environment a little too tough? Didn't you just earn 250,000 yuan selling ice lantern a while ago? Sha Ruofei smiled faintly and said, Enough about me for now. You still haven't told me how you got my address. Ling Qingxie smiled proudly and said, I can do anything. Isn't it easy to get an address? Do you want to know? Beg me and I'll tell you. Sha Ruofei pursed his lips and said, Forget it if you don't want to tell me. Boring, seeing that Sha Ruofei did not respond, Ling Qingxie pouted slightly and said, Forget it, forget it. I'll tell you. Guan Ping gave me your address. I happened to meet him at Ling Ji restaurant that day and mentioned you when we were chatting. Realization dawned on Sha Ruofei. Guan Ping and he had been classmates in junior high and high school and worked as a real estate agent for a company. At that time, in order to raise money, Sha Ruofei had asked Guan Ping to help sell the house in a short period of time. Guan Ping had also helped find this cheap rental house, so Guan Ping naturally knew his address. Ling Qingxie then asked with concern. Ruofei, I heard from Guanping that you sold your family's house as well, and in a hurry. Are you facing any difficulties? Sha Ruofei smiled faintly and said, I was in desperate need of money at the time, but that's all settled now. Sha Ruofei could give everything he had without hesitation for the sake of his life and death brother's mother, but he did not want to publicize it. In his opinion, taking care of Uzi's mother was his duty. Ling Qingxie was a smart woman. Seeing that Sha Ruofei was unwilling to say more, she stopped asking. Sha Ruofei asked with a smile. Miss Ling, what brings you here so early in the morning? Ling Qingxie was slightly annoyed. She rolled her eyes at Sha Ruofei and said. What else? I wanted to have a meal with you, but you refused to go out on many occasions. I had no choice but to come and invite you myself. Sha Ruofei smiled awkwardly and said. I've been very busy previously, how about this? I'll treat you today. You can choose any place you want. Ling Qingxue's anger turned to joy. She looked at Sha Ruofei expectantly and asked. Then can we eat at home? You cook for me yourself. Sha Ruofei hesitated. The rental house had a communal kitchen, but Sha Ruofei was single and did not buy any kitchenware. He only had a small induction stove. Seeing this, Ling Qingxie immediately grabbed Sha Ruofei's hand and shook it. Can't you? Sha Ruofei immediately felt that he could not take it anymore. He hurriedly pulled his hand out and said, Fine, fine, fine. Whatever you say, let's just eat at home. Ling Qingxie was overjoyed and said excitedly, That's great, that's great. Ruofei, let's go out and buy groceries together. When we just arrived, I saw a Walmart at Three Mountains Plaza. When Ling Qingxie mentioned grocery shopping, Sha Ruofei had an idea. He smiled and said, there's no need for groceries. I have them all at home. With that, Sha Ruofei casually picked up a tomato from the fruit plate on the table and handed it to Ling Qingxie. By the way, I don't have any fruits to serve you. These tomatoes taste quite good. Try them first. Just rest in the house for a while. I'll go to the kitchen to prepare. Lunch will be ready at 11 o'clock sharp. These were tomatoes produced in the spiritual map space. Sha Ruofei would bring a few out every day to eat his fruits, so there were ready-made ones in the room. This tomato was twice the size of an adult's fist. The red tomato emitted a faint fragrance that made one's appetite increase. Ling Qingxue's family was in the food and beverage industry, so she naturally knew her stuff. She was so focused on talking that she did not notice the tomato on the table. Now that she saw it, her eyes lit up. She quickly took the tomato and looked at it for a while before slowly bringing it to her mouth and taking a bite. The sweet juice flowed into Ling Qingxue's cherry mouth. She felt her entire body tremble. All her taste buds seemed to be cheering at this moment. She couldn't help but swallow it in big mouthfuls. Then, she took a deep breath and said in disbelief. This, is too delicious. 
With that, she completely disregarded her ladylike image and ate an entire tomato in big mouthfuls. Then, she asked impatiently, Ruofei, where did you buy these tomatoes? Do you have more? Sha Ruofei saw that there was still some red tomato juice around Ling Qingshui's mouth. He couldn't help but smile and hand over a tissue. You still want to eat it? Don't you want to have lunch? Ling Qingshui smiled in embarrassment. After wiping her face clean, she said, Who says I'm going to eat it? I'm trying to understand where it came from, okay? Don't forget what my family does. Sha Ruofei smiled mysteriously and said, I'll tell you at lunch. Miss Ling, take a break first. You can play with the computer. I'll prepare lunch for you. Oh, Ling Qingxie pouted and said, You're still keeping me in suspense, but seeing that you're so solicitous in preparing lunch for me, I'll tolerate it. Go, go. Sha Ruofei laughed and left the room. He first went to the public bathroom and carefully locked the door. After carefully checking that it was safe, he took out the spiritual map and entered the space with a thought. Sha Ruofei quickly went to the area where the super vegetables were stored. He chose a few vegetables and packed them in a basket, then left the space with the basket. It only took two to three minutes. After carefully hiding the spiritual map, Sha Ruofei carried the basket of vegetables to the communal kitchen and started working. Sha Ruofei only had a small induction cooker and a few noodles and eggs left. However, with the super vegetables produced in the space, it was enough for lunch. The only flaw was that there were no meat dishes. However, a beautiful girl like Ling Qingxie must be very concerned about her figure. She probably wouldn't mind not eating meat. After preparing for more than half an hour, Sha Ruofei had made a total of four dishes. Cucumber salad, braised eggplant, stir-fried romaine lettuce, and scrambled eggs with tomatoes. As for the main dishes, he had made two large bowls of noodles. Of course, he did not forget to add the vegetables produced in the space. New chapters will be fully updated at November E.L. Bint.com. Sha Ruofei placed the four dishes on the table one by one, then pushed one of the bowls of noodles to Ling Qingxie and said with a smile. The place is simple, so I just made a few dishes. Don't mind them. Ling Qingxie lowered her head slightly and said. Everything tastes good when I eat with you. Sha Ruofei immediately felt awkward and did not dare to continue the conversation. He quickly changed the topic and said. Come, come, let's eat. Taste my cooking. Ling Qingxie gave Sha Ruofei a resentful look, but when her gaze fell on the four dishes, she could not help but look surprised. These four dishes were all very good looking. The emerald green vegetables and tender cucumbers made one's index finger itch. Ling Qingxie forgot about her disappointment and picked up her chopsticks to place a piece of cucumber into her mouth. She chewed slowly with her eyes closed and a look of enjoyment appeared on her face. Then, she picked up a piece of every dish and savored it carefully. After a while, Ling Qingxie praised Ruofei, this, I've never eaten such delicious vegetables. Your cooking is amazing. Sha Ruofei smiled smugly and chuckled. That's of course. Ling Qingxie took another bite of tomato with scrambled eggs and frowned. No, this egg is a little old. She immediately ate a few more mouthfuls of eggplant and vegetables. Suddenly she came to a realization and said, Ruofei, I was almost deceived by you. It must be because of the ingredients. The ingredients you used must be extraordinary. And that tomato you gave me just now, tell me honestly, where did you get such good ingredients? Sha Ruofei laughed as expected of the little princess of Lingji's restaurant chain. I really can't hide it from you. Eat first. I'll tell you after eating. Seeing that Sha Ruofei was keeping her in suspense, Ling Qingxie glared at him unhappily. However, she still could not resist the temptation of delicious food. The two of them cleared the noodles and vegetables like a whirlwind. Ling Qingxie touched her stomach without caring about her image and said coquettishly. I ate too much, it's all your fault. I finally lost one kilogram. Now I'm going to gain back. Sha Ruofei chuckled and said. You're in great shape. Why would you need to lose weight? Ling Qingxie looked delighted. Really? You really think I'm in good shape? Sha Ruofei touched his nose awkwardly and changed the topic. Err, didn't you just want to know the origin of my ingredients? This topic was obviously interesting to Ling Qingxie, and her thoughts immediately shifted to this side. She quickly asked. 
Yes, 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 tell me quickly, where did you buy all these vegetables and fruits? I'll get the company's procurement department to buy some too. We need premium ingredients too much now. Sha Ruofei had already found an excuse and said with a smile. Then I'm afraid you'll be disappointed, these vegetables can't be bought on the market at all. A friend of mine who does research on new varieties of vegetables gave them to me. They're their latest products and haven't been released to the market yet. Is that so? Ling Qingxie was slightly disappointed. Recently, the sales of Ling Ji's restaurant chain had fallen a little. As for their main competitor, Ming Hao Restaurant, they had poached a famous chef to serve as the executive head chef. It was said that his ancestors were once imperial chefs in the palace. The restaurant had launched several signature dishes at once, and their sales had soared. The young master of the restaurant chain was Lu Wen, the little fatty who had teamed up with Lu Ling Qingxie was sincerely happy for Sha Ruofei and she said. 1546. Ruofei, this project is definitely worth investing in. You have good taste. Ming Hao at the Immortal Succulent store that day. Ling Qingxie had been worrying about the decline of the company's business recently. That day, she suddenly discovered such good ingredients and saw a glimmer of hope to break out of her predicament. She did not expect Sha Ruofei to tell her that it was still in the research stage and had not been mass-produced. She was naturally quite disappointed. At this moment, Sha Ruo changed the topic and said, But my friend can still do it in small batches. Miss Ling, are you interested in a collaboration? When Ling Qingxie heard this, she immediately felt a glimmer of hope. She shouted in surprise. Of course I am. Ruofei, where is that friend of yours? Take me to him now. Even if it was just a small scale supply, it was no different from providing timely help to Ling Ji's restaurant. Moreover, this new vegetable was meant to be used for high end users. It was not a big deal if there was a small quantity. The rarer something was, the more precious it was. Its main function was still to be used as the Ling Ji's restaurant's signature product. To put it bluntly, it was used for their reputation. Sha Ruofei smiled and said. Speaking of which, I'm still working with him. I can be his representative. Ling Qingxie was even happier when she heard that. Then, she revealed a look of realization and asked. So you sold your house some time ago to raise money to invest in this new vegetable variety project. Sha Ruofei was stunned for a moment, but since Ling Qingxie had misunderstood, he went with the flow and said vaguely. Something like that. After saying that, Sha Ruofei thought to himself, I'll definitely invest a lot of money in super vegetables in the future. This shouldn't be considered a lie. Ling Qingxie was sincerely happy for Sha Ruofei and she said, Ruofei, this project is definitely worth investing in. You have good taste. Sha Ruofei chuckled and said, Of course. Ling Qingxie then asked, Ruofei, how many of these new vegetables can your friend provide us at most? After saying that, Ling Qingxie looked at Sha Ruofei expectantly. Sha Ruofei thought for a moment and said, There are about six new vegetable types available now, including romaine lettuce, cucumbers, tomatoes, water spinach, spinach, and eggplants. They are all common varieties on the market, but their quality is definitely much higher. In the early stages, 10 kg of each vegetable type can be supplied a day. After a week, 25 kg a day shouldn't be a problem. After a month, we can supply 50 kilograms a day. Sha Ruofei had only started planting these vegetables because he wanted to keep them for himself to eat. However, because the vegetables in the spiritual space were growing too quickly, there were already a lot in excess. Now that he was prepared to progress in this area, Sha Ruofei naturally wanted to expand the planting area. With the production speed of the spiritual map space, 50 kilograms a day was no pressure at all. Of course, there was only so much land in the space, and some had to be reserved for the succulents. Therefore, the only way to continue to increase production was to plant them in the outside world. However, if he planted them in the outside world, he had to rent land and hire people. Moreover, the issue of maintaining the quality of the vegetables was also a problem. However, Sha Ruofei did not have the energy to worry about these and would leave it for the future. When Ling Qingxie heard this number, she pondered for a moment before nodding. It's not a lot, but it should be enough to solve our immediate problem. 50 kilograms a day seemed like a lot, but Ling Ji's restaurant was a large chain of restaurants. There were more than 10 stores in the Three Mountains City alone. 
Fifty kilograms of vegetables were like a pebble thrown into the sea. It would not cause any ripple at all. However, it was enough to gather popularity and is a limited supply in the stores of a few central areas. Ling Qingxie continued. Ruofei, in terms of price, if the spinach and eggplant are 50 yuan per 500 grams, and the rest are 30 yuan per 500 grams, do you think it's okay? This price was at least 10 times the market price. Ling Qingxie was really full of sincerity. Sha Ruofei nodded almost without hesitation. Deal. Since he had decided to launch these vegetables to the market, he was naturally going to take the high-quality route. Besides, he also felt that his super vegetables were completely worth this price. Ling Qingxie said happily, I hope we work well together. By the way, when can you start supplying the vegetables? Sha Ruofei thought for a moment and said, In three days. I'll give you an address then. Just send someone to pick up the groceries every day. Since they were going to work together for a long time, Sha Ruofei definitely needed to rent another place. This rental house lived too many people and Sha Ruofei could not possibly supply the vegetables here every day. If he only went out and stayed inside for a long time, it would definitely attract attention. Alright, I'll go back and draft a contract now. Let's sign it in two days. Ling Qingxie said. She seemed a little too eager. Sha Ruofei asked half jokingly. What's the hurry? Aren't you going to sit a little longer? Ling Qingxie immediately glanced at Sha Ruofei flirtatiously and asked, Would you like me to stay longer? Sha Ruofei hurriedly said, Err, business is more important, more important. Seeing this, Ling Qingxie burst out laughing and rolled her eyes at him. Coward, I'm leaving. I'll look for you to sign the contract tomorrow. Don't vanish somewhere again. I'll send you out. Sha Ruofei said with relief. After sending Ling Qingxie off, Sha Ruofei tidied up the cutlery and sat in front of the computer. He had always been concerned about the situation of the online shop. He had put all the goods on sale yesterday, and he could not wait to see if there was any business. Opening the Taobao seller's platform, Sha Ruofei was instantly disappointed. It was empty. There was not a single purchase record. There were even very few people browsing. A wry smile crossed Sha Ruofei's face. It seems have been too idealistic. In fact, when he thought about it, this situation was normal. It was just a new online store with no credit history or transaction history, and no paid promotion. Besides, it sold very few products and every one was so expensive. Even if someone happened to click in, they would probably quickly click onto the red cross in the upper right corner. Sha Ruofei frowned slightly and sat in front of the computer, thinking. Fall 0 WW current novels on November 3 LB in company per meter. It was probably not a good idea to wait like this. He had to think of something. The first thing Sha Ruofei thought of was to spend money to promote on Taobao. However, he quickly rejected this idea. Not only would it cost a lot of money, but the effect would also be difficult to guarantee. The reason was as mentioned previously, the credit and transaction records of the store were zero. Moreover, the price was so expensive that most people would not believe it easily. Moreover, Sha Ruofei had originally planned to take the high-quality route and not care about the sales volume, so there was not much point in doing a paid promotion. After thinking about it, there was only one way. That was to first make a name for himself in the succulent social circle. Sha Ruofei's target client was originally a small group of high-end users in the succulent circle. At the thought of this, Sha Ruofei immediately thought of Liang Kichao. This buddy was a rich second-generation heir, and he ran his immortal succulent store. He should have many connections in the succulent plant industry. Sha Ruofei definitely had to ask him for help. With his mind made up, Sha Ruofei immediately picked up his phone and called Liang Kichao. Ruofei, is there some supreme-grade succulent that you want to sell? Liang Kichao asked him patiently as soon as he picked up the phone. Sha Ruofei chuckled and said, Brother Liang, that supreme grade ice lantern last time was hard to come by. How can it be so easy to get? However, I do have some good things on hand. Liang Kichao said quickly, Brother, don't keep me in suspense. Tell me, what is it? Sha Ruofei said, Brother Liang, a friend of mine has cultivated some very good succulent seedlings. I wonder if you're interested. Seedlings. Liang Kichao was slightly disappointed, but when 
he thought of the extremely stunning supreme great ice lantern jade dew that Sha Ruofei had brought last time, he felt that since Sha Ruofei recommended it, the quality must not be bad. So he said quickly, I'm interested. Where's your friend, little Sha? Can I see the goods now? Sha Ruofei smiled and said, Brother Liang, my friend has an online store. I'll send you the website address after I hang up. You'll know when you go there and take a look. At this point, Sha Ruofei thought for a moment and added, That online store may have just opened, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I verified it myself. All right, send me the website address. Liang Kichao said readily. After hanging up, Sha Ruofei sent the website to Liang Kichao. Less than five minutes later, Liang Kichao called. As soon as Sha Ruofei picked up, he heard Liang Kichao's excited voice. Damn, little Sha, your friend is too awesome. He, where did he get so many rare supreme grade succulent seedlings, I can't believe my eyes. White skinned moon realm, blooming cages, jade fans and myriad elephant, they're all mutated rare species. If you didn't guarantee it yourself, I would definitely think that the shop owner is a scammer. Liang Kichao was so excited that he was almost incoherent. Sha Ruofei laughed and asked. So, are you interested, brother Liang? Yes, it's simply too interesting. Liang Kichao said loudly. I'll place an order immediately. I want all these succulent seedlings. Sha Ruofei was stunned for a moment, then he could not help but smile bitterly. He had guessed the process correctly, but not the ending. Liang Kichao did have a lot of connections in the succulent circle, but he was also a rich second generation heir who spent money like water. These succulent seedlings were expensive to ordinary people, but the total price of more than a hundred seedlings was only about 100,000 yuan. To Liang Kichao, this bit of money was nothing. It was not easy for him to come across such rare species, so how could Liang Kichao let it go? Brother Liang, wait. Sha Ruofei quickly said. What is it? Brother Liang asked, puzzled. It's like this, my friend is intending for me ask you to help promote his new store. He wants to attract more customers, Sha Ruofei said in embarrassment. If you buy all of them. Liang Kichao's family ran a big business. He had been influenced since he was young, so he immediately understood what Sha Ruofei meant. I understand, Liang said. But, those succulent seedlings are too, he he. This guy still couldn't bear to let go of something good. Sha Ruofei hurriedly said. Brother Liang, don't worry. You can also buy some inappropriate quantity this time. Moreover, there will be more and better succulents on sale in the future. Don't be afraid that you won't be able to buy them. At this point, Sha Ruofei pondered for a moment and added. Also, I heard that my friend has a pot of mature supreme grade white skinned moon realm that he's also interested in selling. The quality is not lower than the previous pot of ice lantern. If you help him this time, he'll definitely prioritize you when he wants to sell it in future. Liang Kichao was immediately interested and quickly asked, Is the quality really no lower than the supreme grade ice lantern last time? Sha Ruofei said firmly, Of course. Then he lowered his voice a little and said, Actually, it's the mature plant of the white-skinned moon realm seedlings sold on his online store. Do you think the quality can be bad? Of course, it was impossible for Sha Ruofei to sell the mature plant. However, after he cut and reproduced it this time, he chose two or three pots of the best quality from each of the succulent seedlings and kept them. He was prepared to nurture them into mature plants for the next reproduction to increase the production as soon as possible. In a month or so, he would just choose one of these two or three white-skinned moon realm and sell it to Liang Kichao. After growing in the spiritual map space for two to three months, the quality of the newly cultivated mature white-skinned moon realm would definitely far exceed the pot that Sha Ruofei had bought online. Upon hearing that it was actually the mature plant of those white-skinned moon realm seedlings, Liang Kichao's doubts immediately disappeared. The quality will definitely not be bad. Ruofei, you must help me talk to your friend and ask him to reserve that pot of white-skinned moon realm to me. Don't worry, I'll immediately contact some friends in the circle and guarantee that your friend's online shop will make a name for itself in the circle in the shortest time possible. Sha Ruofei was overjoyed. Thank you, brother Liang. Liang Kichao repeatedly reminded Sha Ruofei not to forget about the white-skinned moon realm. Sha Ruofei naturally agreed. After hanging up, Sha Ruofei snapped his fingers and waved his fist happily. 
Two minutes later, Sha Ruofei saw that someone had placed an order for two pots of each type of succulent. Just as Sha Ruofei was marveling at Liang Kichao's efficiency, he couldn't help but laugh when he saw the buyer's information. The delivery address was the immortal succulent store and the recipient was Liang Kichao himself. Sha Ruofei understood after some thought. Liang Kichao was still worried that he would not be able to snatch it after introducing his friends to buy it, so he must have made the first move after hanging up. He was probably just starting to promote the store to his friends in the succulent circle. Fortunately, Liang Kichao was quite kind. He only bought two pots for each type of succulent. After another ten minutes, Sha Ruofei began to see new orders on Taobao. This time, it was not Liang Kichao, but a real succulent customer. For half an hour after that, new orders kept appearing. Some ordered three pots, and others five. More than a hundred pots of succulent seedlings were snapped up in half an hour. Most of these orders had the words, recommended by Director Liang of the Immortal Succulent Store, written in the remarks. Sha Ruofei looked at the sales statistics. After all these transactions were completed, he would have earned more than 110,000 yuan. In the spiritual map space, it would take at most a few months for the mature plant to recover and grow. Moreover, this was the first time. Later on, with the increase in the number of mature plant, there would be more seedlings that could be cultivated with each cottage. In other words, in the future, Sha Ruofei would be able to earn at least 100,000 yuan a month from the succulents, and it would be almost at zero cost. This was something Sha Ruofei would never have dared to think about in the past. With the spiritual map space, it became so easy to earn money. Moreover, this was only one of the many functions of the spiritual map space. There were also the super vegetables, the magical tricolored petals, and other possible functions that had yet to be discovered. The value of this spiritual map space was really immeasurable. Sha Ruofei calmed himself down and began to make plans for the next step. First of all, the most important thing now was to find another place to live. Be it super vegetables or succulent seedlings, the current rental house was obviously no longer suitable. There were too many people. Thinking of this, Sha Ruofei first put up an announcement on the website's home page. It read, Thank you for everyone's support. The first batch of high quality succulents in our shop has been sold out. We will be shipping them one after another within three days. Those who did not manage to buy them, please wait patiently. Within a month, there will be more rare and precious succulents for sale in our shop. Everyone is welcome to purchase them when the time comes. After hanging up the announcement, Sha Ruofei packed his things, hid the spiritual map, and prepared to go out to look for a house. Sha Ruofei had just reached the alley of the shanty town when his phone rang. This was a call from Tian Hillen's secretary, Wu Likian. It turned out that she had already coordinated with the city's education bureau to settle Lin Chao's school transfer. The school was set at the No. 8 High School in Sanchen City. It was a reputable high school in the province. Moreover, the third year class of this school was the best among all the other schools. In the past five years, three of the provincial top scorers in humanities had come from this class of the No. 8 High School. Lin Chao was an art student. Sha Ruofei quickly thanked her. Wu Likian told him that she would personally send Lin Chao to know. 8 high school in the afternoon. Since the mayor's secretary was going to be involved personally, Sha Ruofei naturally could not be absent. Hence, he could only put aside the matter of finding a house and meet Wu Likian at the city government guest house at 2 in the afternoon. After hanging up the phone, Sha Ruofei looked at the time and saw that it was almost 1.30 p.m., so he called Lin Chao directly and told her about the new school. He told her to leave at 2 o'clock and report directly at No. 8 High School. Then, Sha Ruofei took a taxi straight to the city government's guest house. At 2 o'clock sharp, Sha Ruofei brought Lin Chao downstairs. Hu Zi's mother had yet to fully recover, so Sha Ruofei let her rest in the house. With Sha Ruofei around, Hu Zi's mother was very relieved and did not insist on following them to the school. The two of them walked to the first floor and saw that Wu Likian had just walked into the lobby. After a few pleasantries, the three of them got into Wu Likian's Passat. Sha Ruofei took the front passenger seat, and Wu Likian took Lin Chao's hand and got into the back seat. As a third-year art student, Lin Chao naturally knew of the famous No. 
ate high school, so she was both excited and nervous along the way. Wu Likian could tell that Lin Chao was a little nervous. She smiled and said, Little Lin, don't worry. The Education Bureau has already informed them. When you reach there, you can transfer directly into the top class for arts. If you can't keep up with progress for the time being, it's fine. The school will arrange for experienced teachers to tutor you. Thank you, Secretary Wu. Lin Chao said obediently. Wu Likian smiled and said, Hey, why are you calling me Secretary Wu? Just call me Sister Wu. Oh, thank you, Sister Wu. Lin Chao blushed slightly and said softly. Sha Ruofei also smiled and turned around. Sister Wu, thank you so much for this matter. Please help me convey my gratitude to Mayor Tian. Read updated stories at noval.com. Little Sha, don't stand on ceremony. Wu Likian said. It's just a small matter. As they talked, the car reached No. 8 High School and stopped in front of an office building. The principal, vice principal, dean, and other teachers of class 1 of No. 8 High School were already waiting downstairs. They had already received a call from the director of the Education Bureau himself and knew that it was Mayor Tian's secretary who was bringing the transfer student to report that day. Naturally, they did not dare to treat them poorly. If it wasn't for the fact that Wu Likian didn't want to attract too much attention, the director of Education Bureau might have personally accompanied her. Who wouldn't want to seize the opportunity to get close to the mayor? Especially since Wu Likian's boss was very likely to become a member of the standing committee of the provincial committee. Director Wu, hello. Welcome to No. 8 High School for inspection and guidance. Principal Rao of No. 8 High School took a step forward and said enthusiastically. Wu Likian had a smile on her face. She shook Principal Rao's hand gently and said. Principal, I'm not here to inspect and provide guidance. Mayor Tian only gave me one task today, which is to send student Lin Chao over to report. Principal Rao had already paid a lot of attention to the student because the Director of Education Bureau had personally informed him. Now that he heard Wu Likian's words, he immediately understood that this matter was not Wu Likian's private matter, but Mayor Tian's personal instructions. The importance of the matter immediately rose to another level in his heart. Yes, 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 it is important for her to report, Principal Rao said with a warm smile. We have already completed the relevant procedures. Then, Principal Rao pointed at a slightly reserved middle-aged woman beside him and said, this is Teacher Xu, the form teacher of the arts class. Hello, Director Wu. Teacher Xu hurriedly came forward to greet her, looking a little reserved. Wu Likian gave a friendly smile and said, Teacher Xu, please take care of Lin Chao as she learns in your class in the future. Of course, of course. Principal Rao also said from the side, Teacher Xu, Lin Chao has just transferred over. You have to pay more attention to her studies in life. Help her integrate into the new class as soon as possible. I will, Principal, Teacher Xu said quickly. Sha Ruofei couldn't help but feel a little emotional as she watched from the side. The school leaders lined up to welcome her, and the form teacher was seen to be stepping on thin ice. Lin Chao could probably be considered the most impressive transfer student in the history of No. 8 High School. Fortunately, Sha Ruofei also knew Lin Chao's character. He believed that she wouldn't become complacent because of this and lose her position. Principal Rao looked at Wu Likian and asked, Director Wu, then, should we invite student Lin Chao and teacher Xu to meet the students in class? Sure. Wu Likian nodded and smiled. Then, she said to Lin Chao, Little Lin, then follow your teacher to class. If you have any difficulties in the future, just call Sister Wu directly. Sha Ruofei also said, Chao'er, when you reach the new class, you have to study hard and get along well with your classmates, understand? Lin Chao nodded and said seriously. Yes, I will. Thank you, Brother Ruofei. Thank you, Sister Wu. Sha Ruofei and Wu Likian smiled and nodded. The two of them watched as Lin Chao gradually walked away with Teacher Xu. Principal Rao very politely invited Wu Likian to inspect the school and give feedback. However, Wu Likian's purpose for this trip was not for anything else, so she politely declined. She got into the car with Sha Ruofei, and the school leaders waved goodbye. The car drove out of the gates of No. 8 High School before Wu Likian asked, Little Sha, where are you going? I'll drive you, Sha Ruofei said. 
Sister Wu, just drop me off somewhere in front. I'm going out to find a place to rent this afternoon. I have no specific destination. Wu Likian had obviously misunderstood and thought that Sha Ruofei was looking for a house for Lin Chao and her mother. She smiled and said, By the way, I forgot to tell you just now. I happened to hear this morning that a colleague's house is being rented out. He bought a house outside and moved out. The family building is two bedroom and very close to no. 8 high school. Personally, I think it's very suitable for Lin Chao and her mother. And the rent isn't expensive. It's only 800 yuan a month. How about that? Do you want to see the house? Sha Ruofei was immediately tempted. At the same time, he could not help but look at Wu Likian in a different light. Although Wu Likian had said it casually, it was obviously not as simple as happening to hear about it. Whether it was the location, size, or rent, this house was simply tailored for Lin Chao and her mother. Wu Likian had definitely put in a lot of effort to find it. It had to be said that this secretary was smart and meticulous. Wu Likian knew what Sha Ruofei meant by saving Professor Tian's life, and she also knew very well that Tian Hillen appreciated Sha Ruofei very much. Therefore, she was also very concerned about Sha Ruofei and spared no effort. Sha Ruofei pondered for a moment and said, Sister Wu, since you have helped us find it, it must be very suitable. But since Auntie and Chao are living in the house, why don't I bring them to see the house after Chao finishes school? You don't have to personally be there. Just give us the landlord's contact information and help us inform the landlord. Sure, no problem, Wu Likian said readily. Then she asked with a smile. Since you don't have to look for a house anymore, where are you going now? Sha Ruofei was stunned for a moment. He smiled awkwardly and said, Sister Wu, actually, I want to rent a house myself. Before you called me, I was just about to wander around and try my luck. Oh, you live alone? Wu Likian asked. Then what kind of house are you looking for? Your sister Wu knows quite a lot of people. I might be able to help you find a suitable one. Sha Ruofei thought for a moment and said, Wu Likian, the house I'm looking for might not be easy to find. Oh, tell me about it first. Wu Likian became even more interested. First I hope it's a house that is somewhere quieter. It doesn't matter if it's a little more remote. There must be a separate yard and not many other houses around. That would be best. Wu Likian couldn't help but laugh. Little Sha, look at you, are you intending to become a hermit? He he. I like peace and quiet, Sha Ruofei said. That's why I said it might not be easy to find. It's fine, Sister Wu. I'll go to the suburbs myself and look for a suitable one. Wu Likian pondered for a moment and said with a smile. Little Sha, now that you mention it, I do know a house that fits all the conditions you mentioned. Oh, Sha Ruofei's eyes lit up. Sister Wu, tell me what kind of house it is. Wu Likian said with a smile. After what you just told me, I thought of one of my relatives' houses that basically fit your criteria. But I don't know if you'll find it too remote. His house is in Changping County and about a half hour drive from the city. Half an hour's drive shouldn't be a problem. Sha Ruofei was very tempted. Then, he asked, Sister Wu, is your relative's house a separate unit? Does it lead to a connecting road? Wu Likian said with a smile. Of course there's a connecting road. To be honest, it's a small detached villa my relatives have built on a local homestead for their holidays. Now their whole family has emigrated overseas, so the house is not in use. So, are you interested in renting it? Actually, Wu Likian's relatives wanted to sell it directly, but if she stepped in, it would not be an issue to rent it out. After all, they were not in urgent need of money, and if they did not sell it for the time being, the property might still increase in value. With a phone call from her, it could do Sha Ruofei a favor. Why not? Sha Ruofei immediately said, Of course I'm interested. It's just a single villa. Sister Wu, will the rent be very expensive? Wu Likian chuckled and said, It definitely won't be cheap for someone else. But if you want to rent it, we can just charge you a symbolic sum. My relatives aren't short of money. Sha Ruofei chuckled in embarrassment and said, isn't that, a little inappropriate? Just tell me if you want it or not. Wu Likian glanced at Sha Ruofei and said with a smile, If you want to rent it, I'll call my relative now. We'll go look at the house in the afternoon. If there's no problem, we'll settle this matter. Sure. 
But it's too much trouble for you, Sister Wu. Sha Ruofei said. Wu Likian smiled and said. There's no trouble. Mayor Tian gave me half a day off, and she specially instructed me to settle your matters well. I'm just carrying out my boss's instructions. Sha Ruofei stopped turning down the offer and said sincerely. Thank you, Sister Wu. Wu Likian immediately took out her phone to contact her relative. Perhaps her relative was very close to her, or perhaps it was because of her status as the mayor's secretary, in any case, the other party agreed readily. Moreover, they had agreed to view the house immediately and to meet at the villa. Therefore, Wu Likian hung up the phone and instructed the driver to turn the car around and drive towards Chengping County. After about half an hour of driving, they turned onto a newly built concrete road and drove for a few minutes to an almost 80% new villa. Wu Likian's relative had arrived first. He was a very elegant middle-aged man with gold-rimmed glasses. After exchanging a few pleasantries, they went straight to the house. Sha Ruofei was very satisfied with this villa. Although it was remote, the mode of transport was still very convenient. The cement road was built in front of the house, so it was not a problem to drive a small van. The villa was not big. It covered an area of more than 200 square meters and had a small courtyard in front and behind. The two-story villa had a total of six rooms. Moreover, there were all kinds of appliances and facilities. He could directly carry his bags and move in. Because Wu Likian's relatives were preparing to emigrate, these appliances and furniture were originally planned to be packaged and sold. The front of the villa faced the sea, but it was about 3,000 meters from the sea. In front of the villa was a large piece of wasteland. At the same time, there was a small mountain behind the villa. It was really a good place to have both the mountain and the sea. In terms of rent, Wu Likian's relative only charged 3,000 yuan a month. For such a big vacation villa, 3,000 yuan a month was no different from free rent. Sha Ruofei felt that he had taken too much advantage, so he took the initiative to increase the monthly rent to 5,000 yuan. Even this was considered a low price. After the two parties reached an agreement, they immediately signed the rental contract. The other party did not even want the deposit and gave Sha Ruofei an account number, telling him to transfer the rent to this account when the time came. Moreover, he said that it was fine if he did not have money for the time being. He could pay when he had the money. Sha Ruofei did not know whether to laugh or cry. This was the first time he had seen such an easygoing landlord. Compared to the fierce landlady of the rental house in the slums, this landlord was simply a saint. Of course, Sha Ruofei also knew that this was all because of Wu Likian, so he was still very self-conscious. In front of everyone, he transferred two months' rent, totaling 10,000 yuan into that account. In less than half an hour, the rental issue was settled. Wu Likian's relative handed the key, the access remote, and everything else to Sha Ruofei before politely leaving. Sha Ruofei still had to go back to pack his things, and he had to bring Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao to look at houses at night, so he took Wu Likian's car back to the city. After the long journey, coupled with the house viewing and signing the contract, it was almost time for lessons to end in the afternoon. Wu Likian simply decided to be kind all the way and asked the driver to drive to the entrance of No. 8 High School, where he found a parking space and stopped. After waiting for a while, Sha Ruofei saw Lin Chao walk out of No. 8 High School. She was talking to a girl as she walked. Sha Ruofei was very relieved to see her. It seemed that this little girl had already made new friends on the first day she transferred school. Sha Ruofei pushed open the car door and waved vigorously at Lin Chao. When Lin Chao saw Sha Ruofei, she immediately revealed a surprised smile. She quickly said a few words to the female classmate beside her, then jogged towards Sha Ruofei. Brother Ruofei. Lin Chao did not avoid arousing suspicion at all. She immediately grabbed Sha Ruofei's hand with a bright smile on her exquisite face, attracting the attention of many students. Instead, Sha Ruofei was a little embarrassed. He calmly pulled his hand out and asked, Chao, how do you feel about lessons in the morning? Very good. The students are all quite friendly. And the standards of teaching is very high. Lin Chao said happily, Ha ha, not bad, not bad. Sha Ruofei was also very happy. Let's go. Brother Ruofei will take you to a big meal to celebrate. Lin Chao hesitated for a moment and said, Brother Ruofei, next time, 
I, I want to eat with my mother. Sha Ruofei laughed and said. All right, you're such a filial girl. Let's go then. Let's go over together and eat at the government guest house with auntie. We still have something to settle tonight. What do we have tonight? Lin Chao asked curiously. Sha Ruofei did not keep her in suspense and said. Sister Wu has found a house for you. It's very close to know. Eight high school and is quite suitable in all aspects. I'll bring you there after dinner. Really? That's great. Lin Chao cheered. They got into the car together, and Wu Likian asked the driver to take them to the city government's guest house. When they arrived at the city government's guest house, Wu Likian originally wanted to have dinner with Sha Ruofei and the rest before personally showing them the house. However, Sha Ruofei felt very embarrassed to have troubled her for the entire afternoon. Moreover, the mayor's secretary must be very busy. How could he have the cheek to take up her night's rest? Hence, Sha Ruofei politely declined. All latest novels on Novelbent.com. Wu Likian did not insist. Instead, she made a call to her colleague at the forestry department and arranged for house viewing at 7.30 p.m. She then gave Sha Ruofei her colleague's contact information before leaving. Mom, Lin Chao called as soon as she entered. Hu Zi's mother, who had been resting in her room since the afternoon, quickly asked when she saw Lin Chao. Chao, how was school in the morning? Are you used to it? Did any of your classmates bully you? Lin Chao revealed an amused expression and said. Mom, don't worry. No, 8 high school is the best in arts teaching in the province. And the teachers are very good to me. When I went to report today, even the principal came. Huh, even the principal went. Hu Zi's mother sounded incredulous. Sha Ruofei smiled and explained. Auntie, the school leaders went down to welcome her because of Sister Wu. Oh, it's Mayor Tian's secretary, Wu. Likian. Oh, I see. It must be so much trouble for her, Hu Zi's mother said. Sha Ruofei smiled and said. Auntie, don't worry. Mayor Tian has personally greeted them. The school will take good care of Chao, so you don't have to worry about her life or studies in school. That's right. Mom, don't worry. Lin Chao said with a smile. Let's go and have dinner. We still have to look at houses later. Look at houses. What house? Hu Zi's mother asked, puzzled. Brother Ruofei helped us find a house. It's the family home of the Forestry Bureau. It's also very close to my school. We're going to see the house after dinner. Lin Chao said happily. Ruofei, sorry to trouble you, Hu Zi's mother said gratefully. Sha Ruofei said. Auntie, actually, it was Sister Wu who helped to contact them. If you want to thank someone, thank her. If you think it's all right after seeing the house tonight, let's settle on it. You don't have to worry about the rent. I'll transfer it to the landlord directly. How? How can we do that? Hu Zi's mother said. Ruofei, our family still has some savings. Now that I don't have to see a doctor, I have enough to spend. We can pay for the rent ourselves, we've already troubled you enough these days. Sha Ruofei looked at Hu Zi's mother and said sincerely. Auntie, don't treat me like an outsider. On the battlefield, Hu Zi even sacrificed his life to save me. He's your only son. Before Hu Zi died, I personally told him that from now on, I'll be filial on behalf of him. His mother will be my mother. Thinking of her sacrificed son, Hu Zi's mother's eyes reddened and her lips trembled slightly. She said emotionally, good, good boy. So, auntie, you really don't have to be so polite in the future. I still have to take care of you for the rest of my life and support you. Sha Ruofei said, mmhmm. Hu Zi's mother nodded slightly. Beside her, Lin Chao also had tears in her eyes. Hu Zi's mother said, okay, Ruofei, we'll do as you say about the rent. But you have to promise me something. Sha Ruofei said happily, yes. Just tell me what you need. Hu Zi's mother said to Lin Chao. Chao, -er, go get my coat. Oh, okay. Discover new chapters on n0velbent.com. Lin Chao quickly brought the coat over. Hu Zi's mother took out a bank card from her pocket and handed it to Sha Ruofei. Ruofei, this card contains the 500,000 yuan that you transferred to treat my illness. I didn't touch a single cent. I heard from Chao -er that this is the money that you obtained from selling your house. Young people definitely need money for their careers. Take this card back. The password is Hu Zi's birthday. Sha Ruofei waved his hand and said. Auntie, this won't do. 
This is all a piece of my filial piety. Even if you don't need dialysis and a kidney transplant now, you can still save it for your health. Chower needs a lot of money in her third year of high school. Moreover, she still has to go to university next semester. She can't do without money. Huzi's mother said, Ruofei, listen to me. We all know how you feel. However, we don't need such a large sum of money for the time being. On the other hand, you've just returned from the army. There are many things that officers need money for. Take this money back. I promise you that I'll definitely talk to you if I need money, okay? That's right. Brother Ruofei, you gave us so much money, but we don't have anywhere to spend it on. It's just benefiting the bank. Lin Chao also said, just take it back. Sha Ruofei thought for a long time before nodding. All right, I'll take this money back first. Hu Zi's mother said with relief. Yes, that's a good child. But Sha Ruofei continued, Auntie, I haven't finished yet. I can take the money back, but there are conditions. Go ahead. I can't take all this money. You have to leave at least 100,000 yuan for you to live in Chower to study. Sha Ruofei said firmly, If you don't agree, I won't take this money no matter what. Just let it rot in the bank. Although Hu Zi's mother had said that she would ask for money when she needed it, Sha Ruofei knew that if she had previously refused to use the money when her life was in danger, how could she ask him for help in the future? Although Sha Ruofei could take the initiative to help the mother and daughter, he could not take care of everything, so it was absolutely necessary for them to keep some money. Seeing that Sha Ruofei was determined, Hu Zi's mother could only agree to this condition helplessly. Only then did Sha Ruofei accept the bank card. Lin Chao said happily, All right, now that the matter is settled, can we go eat? We still have to look at the house later. Let's go. Let's eat. Sha Ruofei said with a smile. The three of them arrived at the restaurant on the first floor and ate a buffet with their meal vouchers. Then, they sat on the sofa in the lobby on the first floor and chatted for a while. When it was about time, they went out and took a taxi straight to the forestry bureau's residence. Wu Likian had already informed them, so the landlord was already waiting at the entrance of the residence. After greeting them, he brought Sha Ruofei and the others to see the house. Hu Zi's mother and Lin Chao were very satisfied with the house. It was not high-rise, and although the house was not big, it was fully functional. The security in the residence was better, and it was only two stops away from Lin Chao's school. It could be said that to be very suitable. Hence, Sha Ruofei signed a rental agreement with the landlord on the spot and rented this house in his name. Because Wu Likian had already contacted the landlord, the rent was so cheap that it made one's hair stand on end. It only cost 800 yuan a month, so Sha Ruofei decided to pay the landlord half a year's rent in one go. Half a year later, Hu Zi's mother would definitely be completely healed, and it was time for Lin Chao to go to university, so she did not have to stay here anymore. The landlord passed them the key and left. Lin Chao happily looked around the house. Seeing an innocent smile on Lin Chao's face, Sha Ruofei felt very relieved. Although the house was fully equipped with appliances, there were no bedsheets or blankets yet, so after everyone stayed in the house for a while, Sha Ruofei took a taxi to send the mother and daughter back to the city government guest house. They planned to stay there for another night and officially move in the next day. Ellipsis. The next morning, Sha Ruofei first went to the bank to transfer 400,000 yuan from Hu Zi's mother's card to his account. His financial difficulties, which had begun to be tight again, immediately eased. Then he went straight to the Oriental Department store in the center of Three Mountain City and began his shopping spree. From bedsheets and bedding to kitchen supplies like pots and pans, and also some daily necessities, or even small things like hangers, toilet paper, as long as Sha Ruofei could think of it, he would buy everything. After buying everything, Sha Ruofei had spent more than 10,000 yuan, because he tried his best to buy everything from big brands, so the price was naturally not cheap. There were so many things that even a taxi could not fit them all. Sha Ruofei directly called for a small van. When they arrived at the Forestry Bureau's residential building, he had to make several trips before he finished moving everything. Then, Sha Ruofei personally cleaned the house from inside out. He placed all the things he had bought in place and even made the bed. Then, he entered the spiritual space to retrieve a lot of super vegetables and placed them in the refrigerator in the kitchen. 
After finishing all this, the morning had passed. Sha Ruofei sent a message to Lin Chao and told her to return to the forestry department residence after school at noon. Then, he took a taxi to the city government's guest house to pick up Huzi's mother. At noon, Sha Ruofei personally cooked, mainly using super vegetables as ingredients, and made lunch. The three of them had a meal at home together as a housewarming celebration. The deliciousness of the super vegetables made Huzi's mother eat half a bowl of rice more. Lin Chao almost swallowed her tongue and exclaimed that it was too delicious. Sha Ruofei smiled and said that there were still a lot of these vegetables in the fridge. He asked Lin Chao and the others to tell him after finishing them and he would send them over. After lunch, Sha Ruofei bade farewell and left. The mother and daughter had finally settled down. Before leaving, Sha Ruofei left the bank card with the remaining 100,000 yuan at their house. At the same time, he left a small mineral water bottle of petal solution. Of course, it was a special mixture with grape juice and soda water. Then, Sha Ruofei returned to the rental house in the shanty town and began to pack his things, preparing to move house himself. It was much simpler for Sha Ruofei to move on his own. The precious items were all in the spiritual map space. He only needed to put the few items he left in the house into the spiritual map space. He quickly gathered his things, called the landlord, left the room key on the back of the refrigerator in the communal kitchen, and left the shantytown rental house. As for the deposit that he had paid for two months of rent, Sha Ruofei did not mention it at all. This was because he knew that even if he cut his tongue, that fierce landlady would not return him a single cent. He might as well not waste his effort. As he walked through the alleys of the shanty town, Sha Ruofei suddenly realized that he seemed to be missing the most important thing. Sha Ruofei thought that although the resort villa in the suburbs was very convenient, it was built on the premise that there were cars. If he did not have his own car, taking a taxi would not be a long-term solution. Moreover, if he were to travel to and fro the city from the villa, he would still have to walk a long way to reach the highway. It would be too inconvenient to take a minibus. Hence, buying a car had become Sha Ruofei's top priority. Fortunately, when Sha Ruofei retired, he had already converted his military license to a local driving license. Now, he only needed to buy a car to drive. Hence, Sha Ruofei was in no hurry to go to the villa in the suburbs. He planned to settle the matter of the car in the afternoon. Sha Ruofei did not hesitate much on the choice of model before deciding to buy a pickup. Although he had nearly 500,000 yuan on hand now and could totally buy a good joint venture car, money had to be spent on the blade. There was still a lot to spend in the future. Besides, Sha Ruofei was not someone who liked to show off. From a practical point of view, a pickup was undoubtedly the most suitable. Because at this stage, Sha Ruofei would definitely need to transport things often, such as mailing succulent seedlings, buy flower pots, cardboard boxes, vegetable seeds, farm tools, and so on. If he bought a luxury car or SUV, he would not put it to much use. After making up his mind, Sha Ruofei took a taxi straight to the Washa Motor City in the southern suburbs. There were many car shops there. It did not take long for Sha Ruofei to buy a pickup car that cost about 100,000 yuan. This pickup car was also the most popular model in the country and was very practical. Sha Ruofei paid the full amount on the spot. The car shop also sent some conventional gifts such as film patches, footpads, and fenders. Sha Ruofei added another 2,000 yuan and asked for the trunk cover for the back of the car. He also entrusted the car store to handle the license plates and insurance. This was not a popular car model from a big brand, so there were available cars for collection on the spot. After Sha Ruofei and the other staff of the car store installed the window film and fenders in place, they drove out of the shop. Although the license plate would take a few days to arrive, with the purchase receipt for the new car, it would not be a problem even if he encountered traffic police on the way. After leaving the car shop, Sha Ruofei drove to buy some cardboard boxes, transparent tape, foam strips, bubble bags, and other things for packing and mailing. Then, he went to the electronic city to buy a new computer and a printer. He bought a few boxes of printing paper before driving back to his vacation villa in the suburbs with a full truckload. After returning to the villa, Sha Ruofei first arranged his life matters. He chose a large room on the second floor facing the sea with a small balcony and its own bathroom as his bedroom. 
After carefully locking the door and drawing the curtains, Sha Ruofei took out the spiritual map and entered the spiritual map space with the cardboard box and other packed items. Then, he brought his beddings and daily necessities out of the space. It took a moment to make the bed and place some of the daily necessities in place. Then Sha Ruofei connected the new desktop and printer in his bedroom. The room's internet interfaces were already made, and the landlord had paid for a year's worth of broadband, so he could go online as soon as he was connected. Sha Ruofei first went to his Taobao platform to collate all the orders and printed them out in a form. Then, he entered the spiritual map space with the order information. He was prepared to pack the succulent seedlings in the space and send out the delivery as soon as possible, that was a transaction of 110,000 yuan. The sooner the customer received the goods, the sooner he would get the money. As for why he had chosen to pack it in the space, it was naturally because the 10 times faster time flow would save him a lot of time. Now, the most precious thing to Sha Ruofei was undoubtedly time. After entering the space, Sha Ruofei distributed the goods according to the contents of each order. After gathering the succulent seedlings for an order, he started packing. Before packing, he would first water them with the spiritual pond water. Then, he would wrap each pot of succulent seedlings in a bubble bag and tie them tightly with tape. After placing all the seedlings into the cardboard box, he would fill the gaps with foam strips. Finally, he would seal the cardboard box tightly with transparent tape and paste the order number on the outside. It could be said that there was extreme protection, and it could basically avoid damage to the succulent seedlings caused by the violent sorting of packages. There were more than a hundred pots of succulent seedlings and a total of more than 40 orders. It took Sha Ruofei more than five hours to pack them up, of course, it was only half an hour in the outside world. Sha Ruofei took a lot of effort to bring all 40 over cardboard boxes out of the spiritual map space. After drinking a few mouthfuls of the pond water to recover his energy, he carried the cardboard boxes into the pickup truck and drove straight to Changping County. It was only a 10-minute drive from here to the county city, which was much closer than returning to the city. He had checked the map online before setting off, so he quickly found a branch of the parcel forwarder. Sha Ruofei asked the staff for a stack of delivery slips and began to fill in the delivery slips according to the order information. After filling one slip, he pasted it on the corresponding cardboard box according to the order number. Finally, he weighed and counted the money. While filling out the delivery form, the store's television was broadcasting the local news. The county television station announced that Deputy Chief Jung of the county's Public Security Bureau was being investigated by the organization. At the same time, Zhang Chang and his son were also suspected of crimes and were arrested by the local police. They were also on the county television news. Sha Ruofei could not help but reveal a pleased expression. This was really satisfying. After venting his anger, Sha Ruofei was in a good mood, and the speed at which he filled in the delivery form was much faster. Soon he had all the sheets filled and pasted. A few staff members helped him carry the cardboard boxes in and weigh them. There were more than 40 orders, and the delivery fee alone was more than 500 yuan. He was not a mere customer given that he had sent so many parcels in one go, so the post office staff's attitude was very good. After Sha Ruofei paid, the staff member gave him a receipt and said, Sir, if you send packages regularly and in large quantities, we can sign an agreement. You can give us a call when the time comes and we'll go straight to your place to collect them. And there can be a certain discount on the delivery fees. Sure, Sha Ruofei said without thinking. I have about 40 to 50 orders every month. There might be more in the future, but I live a little far away. It's about a 10-minute drive from the county city. Is that okay? That won't be a problem. The staff said, here's a sample of the agreement. You can take a look. In your case, we can give you a 20% discount. If the collaboration is long, the cost might be even lower. Sha Ruofei took it and browsed through it before nodding. No problem. Let's sign the agreement. The staff immediately found a manager. After registering Sha Ruofei's ID number and address, they quickly typed out an agreement and signed it together. The manager shook hands with Sha Ruofei and said, Mr. Sha, thank you for choosing our delivery company. I hope we can work well together in the future. Happy cooperation, Sha Ruofei said with a smile. By the way, Mr. Sha, 
You can also bring some delivery slips back, the manager said. Our official website has a delivery slip template for download. You just have to fill in the information according to the template on the computer and you can print the delivery slips directly. Really? Shah Ruofei said happily. That's great. Get me a hundred first. After filling in more than 40 delivery forms, Shah Ruofei's hands were sore. If he could print them directly, it would indeed be a lot easier. A few minutes later, Shah Ruofei left the place with a stack of delivery slips. He'd just driven the pickup back to the resort house. Before he could get out of the car, the phone on the console rang. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next chapter.